All right, guys, today's guest is Cameron Johnson, CJ Race Cars. I've known Cameron for a while, man. You've been in the local area building some of the coolest pieces of like rolling chassis artwork. Like whenever you post those things on freaking Facebook, I look at them and like I'll zoom in on like random parts and I'm like, man, the way that they do this or that. And like, mm -hmm. it's like a mix of just like a fabricated car and also like artwork, which is weird. I mean, I know. <laughs> you got Troy on your team and yeah, he's, yeah, he does really well. He is yeah, like Troy's an artwork talented. type of guy. Like yep, it has to like oh, yeah. it has to have like flavor to it. Yep. It can't just be like mm -hmm. this is how it works. And everything's freaking titanium and mm -hmm. ah, man, that stuff's so cool. So you've been building basically all of the you've been building a bunch of the fast and front runner, like no prep king style cars, mm -hmm. tube chassis stuff where it's, it's weird. I'm, I'm actually very interested in that is when somebody walks in, how do you figure out, okay, this is going to NHRA Pro Mod or this is going to No Prep Kings? Like how different are those? Uh, they're quite a bit different. Obviously, like the, the NPK stuff has a lot of rules that you kind of got to follow. So it's steel roof quarters, supposed mm -hmm. to have a VIN, all that stuff. So um, And a lot of people, obviously lately because the TV thing, there's a lot of people trying to chase that. Yeah. So... Uh, we have been doing a lot of that. And even if it's a small tire car that we've been building, people want it to be able to fit um, a big tire in case they want to go that route yeah. or try it or whatever. So um, definitely been doing a lot of that stuff. Yeah, that's the tough thing because now everybody wants to be able to, like, do a couple bar changes. Uh -huh. And because you, you also you have to kind of do that because the rules change pretty abruptly sometimes. Yep, they do. And you're building a $300,000 car. <laughs> that could take two years to build mm -hmm. and you're kind of trying to like predict where exactly where the rules are going to be when you're done yep which is tough yeah so you're probably spent a lot of time looking at the rule book on oh, all yeah. that stuff and then you also have to think about what's not in the rule book mm -hmm. <laughs> and oh what yeah could be in the rule book because yep. they do they change a lot like you said they definitely yeah. change a lot so so you've built Justin's car. You just finished yep. up uh, Monza's car, right? Yep, Monza's car. Dude, that thing is a work of yeah, art. Yeah, I love that car. Every Obviously, every car we do, you know, comes out better than the one before, and we find yeah. things we don't like or we want to change or add. So every car, which which is good and bad because I have a real problem with wanting everything to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I just can't stand, like, I don't care if I lose money. It has to be right. Yeah. And um, every car we do takes longer and longer because there's so much more detail in every car. And then yep. the changes throughout and oh, yeah. that Different kind of motors. thing. Like when we started Monza's, not that it's a ton of work to change the stuff he wanted to change, but like he, he started, it was going to be turboed. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we went to an MH5 uh, Pro Charge deal. And then by the end, it's MH7. So holes in the hood, headers, you know, motor location up and down, just just a bunch of stuff that, that changes during the course of it. So Yeah, you kind of just have to go in a direction. <laughs> and as it changes course a little yep. bit, it's like turning, yep. a, it's like turning oh, yeah. a big boat. It is. That's it what is. they say about, like, the rules, too. It's like turning a big boat. It's, mm -hmm. hard to, it's hard to make a change of the rules. And then you're also looking at what the fast front runners are doing, and you're kind of trying to play catch-up, but also not really. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, no prep king car versus, like, a – versus like an NHRA Pro Mod, they mm -hmm. look very similar. Like to somebody that doesn't really know, mm -hmm. me included, yeah. <laughs> you may think that those cars are yeah. more similar than they are. Like a, a, a No Prep Kings car or a, or a Pro 275 is pretty similar rule base. The body's supposed to be like a factory dimension. Pro mm -hmm. 75, you can run a carbon body as long as it's factory dimension. Uh, NPK, steel roof and quarters, factory dimension. It's supposed to be... I think they let some of the people go with some stuff that's a little yeah. iffy, but um, supposed to not have modified quarters, supposed to not have to have like any modified dimensions, plus or minus three inch, I think, on a wheelbase. So that makes sense. NHRA stuff's obviously longer, lower, chopped. It's it's more for aerodynamics, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much whatever you want. So it's crazy how big of a difference mm -hmm. something simple like a steel roof makes oh, to yeah. like a sixty foot. Like to me, in a streetcar mm -hmm. world, I wouldn't think about that. All mm -hmm. that much like the weight being that high i oh, should be yeah. thinking about it but it's not yep. as big of a concern it's mm -hmm. not it's not like the low-hanging fruit i guess you could say but right. to you guys that's pretty important like even something small like oh that. yeah oh yeah it all adds up for sure and like I, like you said um there's a lot that goes into that motor placement's one of the biggest things so um depending on steel roof and quarters or carbon or what you're in around motor mm -hmm. location is really important okay so also you do the chassis from ground up yes everything you didn't want to just buy somebody else's chassis because no. <laughs> there's there is that route right you yeah could, i guess you could there's a couple probably people that you could 
In today's world, though, the problem you have, like, uh, you could buy a chassis, I guess, from Bickle or yeah. McCamus. You know, Bickle just passed away, unfortunately. Uh, awesome guy. But um, the problem with that is everybody's so far behind. So if you want to get a chassis from Bickle, you're a year or two years just to get a chassis, and you got to start. Oh, wow. So, um, for me, it wouldn't be an option because I'm too picky about how I want it. But yeah, for some people, it is an option. So that makes sense. Yeah. I, I guess buying like something that's already almost done. And I feel like you have this thing where a lot of the cars that are almost done at your shop end up being for sale. <laughs> yeah. But I yeah. think that's normal yeah, in yeah, yeah. building a car. People, uh-huh. people, well, a lot of them are mine. A lot of the ones that almost get done are mine <laughs> and get sold. So that makes sense. There's some tools or equipment I want to buy or something else I want to go after. So yeah, you start building make it very far. And it makes sense if you know you could just sell it anyways. Mm-hmm. It's like you just go to the guy if you spots back in line yeah, and you're exactly. like hey something yep. just popped up and yep. you're basically a year yeah oh yeah a year forward in yep. your whole program now because mm-hmm. you have to man it's crazy you have to think about that like a year or two years out oh yeah there's a lot of people like i think like you know the big names bickle rj uh mccamus i don't think really builds any cars but those guys are years i don't mm-hmm. even think bickle would take an order right now i think they're like 100 cars behind or something holy crap so yeah that's, I mean, that's <clears throat> very enticing to mm-hmm. somebody that loves the sport of drag oh, racing yeah. Yeah, to know huge. that there's that many people banging on the door to get their hands on a car right now. Yep. And it that's is. really good for like NHRA Pro Mod, which very. just kind of had like a resurgence of huge amounts of people getting into it. Yep. Even Big Tire in general seems to have had like a resurgence. It has. It's gotten really big again. I so. mean, I'm sure you talk to customers every day and have much better insight than me on that mm-hmm. and how many people are. Oh, yeah. The Big Tire stuff's definitely gained a lot of traction lately. So yeah. it's uh, it's getting big for sure. The small tire stuff was, was really big for a long time, though. I mean, it's been, I don't know, when Donald started those races 12, 15 years ago, yeah. they were huge. So, I mean, it's been big really long. I think a lot of people are just going back to slicks, and a lot of it may be the NPK and the Pro Mod. and. Mm-hmm. Stevie Fast getting into promo and a lot of that, that environment and those people and those, you know, just brings a good, good vibe. I think it's just also the, the track prep involved now to make a <clears throat> car go, you know, four oh, twenties yeah. on a small oh, yeah. tire is yeah. like astronomical. And people are just yep. kind of, they, they've had their fun with that. And they're like, all right, like, I just want to race now. And I think no prep Kings <clears throat> has done a really good job at that. I was talking to Justin oh, yeah. about it and, you know, everybody always hates on them, I feel like, or at least did, but you can't knock what they've done to the for the sport. Oh, yeah, it's been huge, for sure. Huge. To get 50 or some odd people to build dedicated damn near pro mods. <clears throat> like they, <laughs> It's a pro mod with steel ribbon quarters. There's, it is, there's, yeah. Equipment-wise, there's no difference. And to be honest with you, a steel ribbon quarters car, the investment-wise, it, is more because, for like, if I build a carbon body pro mod, it may take 1,200 hours. To build, like, Monza's car, we have 1,800 hours in that car. Because of the window lips and the body modifications, it's way more work. So 1,800 hours mm-hmm. at your shop is, it's leaving wired and ready to go, or is it leaving? So 1,800 hours is our labor hours. That doesn't include paint and wiring or powder coat. So obviously that's, you know, paint. There's probably whatever it took, six weeks, you know, a, bu- a bunch of hours. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, there might be 2,500 hours in that car with paint and everything. So. Holy crap. And yeah, that's, that's like, you know, probably, what, <clears throat> $200 an hour shop at labor? Or where oh, are you yeah, at now? Well, so unfortunately, the car thing, uh, the pickier I get, the worse it gets because there's like a set amount that people want to pay for like yeah. a car because Bickle charges this, this guy charges this. And it's like 225 for a roller is a lot of money, and there's about 100,000 parts. <clears throat> so you're pretty much stuck there. So the more pick, the pickier I get, the less money I make. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's unfortunate, but I, I just can't help it. Like, I have to have the cars, right? Mm-hmm. And so my business model is not that I want to build, you know, 30 really nice cars a year because I can't because I don't. But if we build really nice cars like Monza's, they get a lot of attention, mm-hmm. which helps us sell the parts. So we, we really focus on the parts. Yeah, because that's just <clears> like <throat> kind of the trophy piece. Right. To, and like Swanstrom is obviously a great yep. example of oh, somebody yeah. who campaigns very heavily for you and some yep. of the parts that i've seen like your anti-roll bars and stuff mm-hmm. way above what i need yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> but i like looking at them <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, i'm like looking at an anti-roll bar that's like thicker than my axle housing i'm like yeah, yeah i probably inches. don't need that. uh-huh yeah some of so we are trying to do some smaller stuff now just keep the quality and do some smaller stuff because that is probably one of the, our parts do do good but probably the biggest problem we have with our parts is they don't apply to everybody you know like yeah. if there's a hundred thousand people in the racing community maybe uh, a tenth of a percent by titanium stuff. So it kind of, even though our quality's there and people, 
I feel like we sell more titanium than anyone probably. There's just not a big market for it. So we yeah. are trying to do some, you know, stuff that's quality, but for more bolt-on or however. So Yeah, the titanium stuff's interesting because <laughs> it's, like, I've always heard people say it's brittle for, like, streetcar stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'd be curious what your opinion is on that. Or would you just be like, if you have, you know, all this titanium trailer your shit to the track <laughs> i don't think it's as brittle as people think uh and at first we fought that a lot people oh I, so and so said don't use it so and so said don't use it yeah. but we've run it so much stuff now i mean we probably have you know 300 sets of four inch bars out there um what dean uh dean carnes stinky yeah. pinky has our four inch bars and a no prep car wish bones mm -hmm. bolts control arms no problems mike Marillo, same thing he has all our stuff justin has all our stuff uh David Reese has been 350 flat with our stuff. Never had a failure, knock yeah. on wood. Like, hopefully we never do, but it, it holds up good. We even have it in, like, you know Bobby Dodgerill with the four-wheel drive truck? Oh, yeah, yep. The, so we the have, black one, right? The yeah, these. he asked us to do stuff because he's trying to get weight out of that car, out of that truck. And some of the stuff I was like, Bobby, I'll I'll do it, but I don't know. You know, like, yeah. I, I don't, I've never done this. Four-wheel drive truck. As soon as they leave the line, the front wheels are trying to drive together. And mm -hmm. we did, like, uh, steering arms, and they're, like, 30 inches long out of one-inch tubing, which is not that big. Yeah. And uh, no problem. I mean, never had a problem. So, yeah, that truck is wild. That thing <clears throat> looks like it's trying to rip itself in half and then also drive into itself. Yeah, it's, it is. It's nuts for sure. It's really cool. There's, yep. there's like, certain, like, crazies in the car community that want to do stuff like that. Yep. And you have to be crazy to, yeah. like, oh, everybody's yeah. doing this. It's like the diesel drag racing. Yep. You have to be a little bit crazy to, yep. <laughs> to put a Cummins diesel yep. in, a, <laughs> in a drag car. It's definitely um it's definitely interesting because the titanium like we were talking about it when I was at your shop mm -hmm. it would take like forty pounds off with just like a couple control arms and oh yeah yeah it forty pounds quick. off of mass that's like moving too oh yeah is yep. pretty substantial and I'm sure you guys obviously know that way better than me I try to weigh things now <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. at first but now I'm trying to mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm getting a little better at thinking about weight but. I mean, streetcar stuff is yeah. Is heavy I mean, no it, still, it still adds up. And the biggest thing for like uh like our stuff, we thought about doing some uh, titanium K members and stuff for Fox bodies because mm -hmm. I think or G body A arms and stuff. But when you run out of places to take weight, like you just can't cut anything else. There's no more carbon. Those things then that becomes the only place you can save weight. Yeah. So even though it might only be twenty pounds or thirty pounds, it's, there's nowhere else to take weight. So. Yeah, that's kind of the thing is like, especially with rules like all steel, all glass. Mm -hmm. Great example of where you can go crazy <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. with titanium, yep. every bolt, every nut. Like, I I know some people like um the car that James drives, that nitrous oh, yeah, Camaro. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that thing has a lot of titanium, <clears throat> mm -hmm. a lot of carbon fiber because, oh, yeah. but it's ultra street, so you can't really get too, too light anyways. But then all steel, all glass. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter as long as out. you got freaking, you, oh, it's steel. There's some of those all steel, all glass cars that are pretty pretty light for sure. I think people don't realize. Yeah, they're like chassis cars with steel window. It's you like know, steel body Fox body cars. racing. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty much. much. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, yeah. It's more, more wild. Yeah, it's, it's a cool class, though. I think it um I think it's gotten out of hand from when they started. Oh, it. yeah. Well, that happens with every class. They start a class like that DXP Street or whatever. They all mm -hmm. start like we're going to try to have this budget-friendly class that People could come race, and then you get, you know, the people from, like, RVW step down to this and step down mm -hmm. to that. Now you got millionaires in a class that was supposed to be a stock Jags plate or whatever, and it's now it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's um it's cool to see classes kind of rise and fall. I mean, you've raced some classes mm -hmm. that have freaking oh, yeah. don't even exist anymore. <laughs> RVW lasted for a yeah, little while, and then it's it like— It got carried away. I mean, RVW, I think, originally was like a— unlimited radial or whatever it was and you had to have stock front and rear suspension and weigh three thousand pounds and now it's you know nitrous car it's pro mod that mm -hmm. has to weigh 2250 pounds like it's just gotten so carried away it's yeah it's hard to keep those guys so a lot of those guys went to pro mod put the big tires back on and it's cool that those cars were close enough mm -hmm. together to where they can at least like repurpose them oh, yeah because it's sad when cars kind of sit and they can't really do anything with yep. them and yep. some nice cars end up sitting and then I hate yep. to see that. I know. That I'm, does suck. I'm sure. I mean, I know a couple of cars that have left your shop that I feel like I would like to see them more. The Supra. Me too. The Supra. Or, oh, yeah. The, the uh, yeah, the Scion. Yeah. Yep. That, it Scion. went to Titan for a while. Titan still has it. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard any updates, so I don't know. They took it out a few times and had some problems with some stuff with the 
I don't know, crank or something, and then some sensors not working, and then the guy who owns it, George, he's a, he's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. He's got a lot of other stuff, so I think it's pretty hard for him he's to spread find spread pretty it. thin. And that's he's a lot like of cars. Three car. GTRs or four GTRs. Yeah. And I, like, that's a big step up from just like a, a GTR, yeah. like an all-wheel drive. Mm-hmm. Like The GTRs are a handful, but then like a big tire, 2,000 horsepower 2J is like... It's insane, yeah. It's a completely different yeah. car. Oh, yeah. And that car is, like, super light, makes a bunch of power. I think the first pass ever off the trailer, that car went, like, 9.8. Like, when it first – it when we were at uh, Texas 2K, it had a bunch of problems with sensors and stuff. Wouldn't even leave the line. But yeah. when we went to Orlando testing, it went, like, 9.8 or 9.6, the first hit. So Nine, it, like – 9.8, 60-foot. Oh, 9.8, 60-foot. Yeah. All right, perfect. I was, <clears throat> yeah. just, I was wondering, I was like, what, mm-hmm. what numbers? Because sometimes people, like, even with eighth mile, they'll just give me, like – the yeah. last, and yeah, I'm like, like well, <laughs> yeah. what are we talking about here? Are we talking about threes? Are we yeah. talking about fours, fives? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it makes a big difference. Yeah, because sometimes people assume I know how fast their car is when mm-hmm. I'm like a five-second guy, you know? I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, slow, yeah. man. <laughs> that's fun, though, to be honest with you. that That's that's still a point where you can have fun. You get to, like, where Justin's at, and it's, well, for him, it is a job, but yeah. those cars are like having a job. Like, you have to have a crew. You have to have a spare motor. You have to spare spare. They're training. needy, man. It's a lot of work. I mean, it almost needy. takes the fun out of it. Obviously, there's a lot of reward if you win or do good or go rounds, but it's a, it's a lot of work. There's big money to win in that. There's not really there much money to win in a, even classes where cars look the same as his. There's Agreed. not as much money Agreed. to win, which is yep. crazy because yep. they have the same amount of time, money, mm-hmm. even more half the time yep. because they're chasing rules that are changing more often. Yep. And even tighter. Yep, I agree. Like John Sears does a really good job at he keeping is, those classes good. really tight. Oh yeah. And man, I just I can't imagine trying to chase that ever moving. It is. It's a lot. number right there. And obviously, you guys, when you make a car that light, you can move weight around pretty well. That's how, the biggest thing. That's a yep. So, how much provisions do you put in a car like that a to lot. move weight? Like a lot, probably thirty. Uh, like 30 different spots to yeah. put weight. And yeah. and when we're talking about weight, we're not talking about big swings. You're probably talking about what? Minimal, usually, yeah. Yeah, I mean, some of the cars, you do have to add a lot of weight. Like those NPK cars, like Clay Cole's car. I don't know if you saw 69 Camaro we finished. Uh, he's yeah, been think, running yep. Futures. He's trying to get in, so he's running Futures yeah. now. And he, he's been doing good. Um, like that car, I think we had to add 200 pounds to the back just to make weight. So that's a oh, lot. Wow. I mean, yeah. It's a lot of just lead just bolted on. Yeah. You get to the point where it's even, even though with all the provisions, you almost have to make like a custom weight because you want it so far back you know they mm-hmm. want it like right over the as far back as you can in yeah the car basically is, so so i guess the the car that you pick to start probably helps a lot with that too oh yeah where yeah. you where you can put weight how far back i mean people yep. do the butter bars on the no yeah on the, yeah on the back real mm-hmm. no prep stuff because the no prep kings is like it always gets that like it's not full no prep because mm-hmm. Even when they did it at Bradenton, the joke yeah, was like was, the track was pretty, pretty, pretty tight. Honestly, for no, and a lot of people were struggling because of yeah, it, you know, because you go to nope. I mean, you go to Bradenton, and I don't think Wade knows how to not prep it. it right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, even from the race the week before or whatever, it was still pretty tight. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> the back of the track stuff does get kind of cool is, too. Yeah, I agree. I I like I like when they actually use a tree. In the I back, I've never been to one. Any time where a race actually uses a tree, I appreciate that. I don't like flashlight starts. Just guessing. I, I just, I hate maybe the arguments. Did, maybe he didn't, yeah. <laughs> if you can eliminate arguments, I, I'll watch it. Yep. But I, I hate that whole debate of who won. Mm-hmm. That that always gets tough. I always mess with my friends because, um, I you know, if you film a car, I can put it in my editing software and kind of know how fast it went, mm-hmm. judging by a wind light. And judging by the whole thing, so all my buddies that do the nope time stuff, I can I always mess with them and send them like, <laughs> oh yeah, how fast they went. Yeah, how fast yeah. they went. They always hate it, but it's like a pretty easy editing trick now at this point. Yeah, keep track of how fast they go. That's funny. So how much has the uh, cost of building these cars gone up then in the last four years? Uh, Even just supplies and the supplies have gone up. Actually, they came back down a little bit mm-hmm. recently. Um, for me, the biggest reason the costs have gone up because my overhead's gone up, the skill of my guys have gone up. You know, the pay's gone yeah. up. Uh, like I said earlier, not that I wasn't always like trying to make everything perfect, but every time you see something and you change and you add details, it just takes longer and longer. So yeah. that's a lot of the reason our cars have gone up because of that. 
Yeah, I mean, it's natural to make revisions and oh, yeah. Yeah. as you learn and change things and new guy comes in and mm-hmm. tells you I want to do it this way instead and you're yeah. like, oh, shit. Yeah, and I listen to all the guys. Like you said, I got Troy, uh, Danny, Taylor. There's a lot of really talented mm-hmm. guys um, that do some really good work that work for me. And if they have ideas, I'm more than willing to, to listen. You know, I mean, uh, most of those guys are older. They've been around a long time, so yeah. I, I have no problem listening to their ideas for sure. And it's cool because somebody like Troy, who's worked on like boats and stuff, oh, yeah. can bring a different, yep. a different like level of knowledge yep. where it's like, if you just work on cars, you kind of have blinders sometimes. I agree. Where you know the boat community may use some cool piece of hardware or yep. something that's a little different or a yep. different heim joint setup or something cool. I'm sure you can find oh, yeah. stuff like that in different communities. Yep, absolutely. Especially in like aviation. If you look at what aviation those guys is, do. I mean, at the Zeus's and the Clecos and all that stuff, that's where it started. Yeah, so. like military and like aviation because yep. those guys are lightweight. Yep. Oh, yeah. Reliable. Yep. You know, you high be, mile yeah. an hour. It's yep. kind of all like. <laughs> yeah, it works out good for sure. Yep. Yeah. That's a that's a fun deal. And then the no prep king schedule is nuts too. It's insane. Dude. I don't know how anybody does it. It's that's, I mean, even Anybody with a, a job, like, I don't know how you can not be solely dedicated to that and, and do it. It's crazy. Even as a job, it's a tough one. <laughs> it is. It is tough, especially if you have to do maintenance. I mean, mm-hmm. these guys are driving, you know, they leave a track Sunday or whatever day they leave. It's two days to the next track, and then they're pulling the motors down, putting them back together, mm-hmm. and getting ready to test, making changes, whatever they have to do. It's it's crazy. One of the things that me and Justin talked about a lot was, like, his planning for having the parts that he knows he's going to need. Yeah is probably what is one of the things that might be able to make him win the yeah. championship yep. type of thing because he knows other people are going to run into part supply issues like pistons and rods and stupid things like that. Yep, absolutely. That are just unobtainium right now. Yeah, it's terrible. So that it's was terrible. a cool thing that I, I was hearing from him, and he's in a tough spot too because in Florida you don't really – you never really pass back by. Yeah, no, we're just out, uh, down here in the bottom. Yeah, if you live like in the middle of the country, you can kind of get home uh-huh. and back to your shop. But he has to just do all that shit on the road. Yeah, overnight. It, it gets expensive. I mean, there's been times, you know, last year we had overnight him stuff or him have to bring the car. We fixed it in, like, whatever that was, three or four days. But Yeah, dude, I'd love to hear to the story them. of you guys having to <laughs> fix that thing. It was a long week. It was a very long week. Because <laughs> wasn't it, like, something like a 1,000 hours or something crazy we, we back into it? We spent about 400 it. hours fixing it, labor, hours, in, like, three and a half days. So, <laughs> so I, I got a hotel across the street, and I had guys just going over there to take naps. Yeah. Going back. I mean, nobody really left. The last day we worked on it started at, like, 7 a.m., and they left the next day at, like, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So however long, never went to sleep, yeah. whatever that is, 36 hours or so. So four guys, or, I mean, 400 hours between X amount of guys yep. just taking shifts in, like, three days. Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was insane. To actually have, like, the supplies, the manpower, mm-hmm. and... Actually we, able to do that is It crazy. all worked out really good because we had just, you know, got a set of doors for the new car. And uh, the guy that makes the front end is local, so mm-hmm. I was on the phone with him. But when Justin first called me, he said, I know I'm going to miss a race, but do you think we can make the next race? I'm like, I don't know. It's going to be a lot. You know, it's only giving us like a week and a half to fix the car. And by the time he got there, he's like, you think we could be at the next race? It's like, hell, we just talked about the race after, you know. <laughs> so it was on a Sunday, I think, afternoon when we got it. And uh, I called a few guys in, and we just started working on it. But... The more people told us we couldn't do it, a lot of people were messaging me, oh, he's going to want the car back in a few weeks. There's no way. Can, you know, Yeah. the more people said no, the more I was like, I have to do this. We yeah. have to do this. And so, that was a huge feat to yeah. basically rebuild the whole car. Yeah, from the firewall forward, uh, window, quarter panel, part of the wing, had a rear end out, wishbone, all kinds of stuff. Holy crap. And wow. you couldn't just be like, no wing. <laughs> like, no, no, they, that's not they an need that stuff. Car. Yeah, yeah, for it's sure. It's crazy how, like, even in the, even in the eighth mile, they need... Oh, yeah. Every little bit. Oh, yeah. And I'd be curious to see, like, that car in a wind tunnel versus, like, maybe some of the other chassis. I know that's a pretty aerodynamic car, but it's so hard to it's really know. It's big, too, though. It's tall. It's really tall. That car is like a... Like, when we build a Camaro... It's like a little bubble. Yeah, when we build a Camaro, like, we have to make provisions in a floor where underneath the seat has seat bars. They dip down mm-hmm. because, like, you get a guy that's six foot tall and their head's, like, really close. So with his car we moved the seat up and he still has like three inches of padding port and he's still got room so it's like it's a really tall and really wide car yeah. so it's, yeah, it's uh, it spacious. can't be as aerodynamic i wouldn't think of some but i'm not sure i know there's some like discussion about taking chassis taking like what body you have into consideration about weight too they did they did that so i think if did you they? have a 72 or older you get 50 pounds off because it's so on air yeah. Yep. Like, yep. So, so like funny. Monza got a 50-pound weight break. Clay gets a 50-pound weight break. Um, huh. With Monza's car, though, with all the stuff he wanted, which 
it's a really good looking car. Uh, it's a huge car. Those cars are huge. Yeah. Uh, wheelbase wise, width wise, everything they're huge. But we did a vinyl top, which is probably twenty pounds, I guess. You know, vinyl top's got four real front headlights, two marker lights up front that real, real tail light. Like the front end of that car, I think was like seventy pounds. And Justin's without the like in this car now, yeah. maybe twenty, maybe. That thing's a damn near street car. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it is. It's got a lot of stuff, you know. And he wanted yeah. a fuel tech and a race pack, so we could read a G meter, G meter off the race pack. Have, which is, you know, whatever yeah. he's comfortable with. But he has like twenty pounds to move. You know, Justin has like two hundred, so it's. Yeah, know. that's not very much. Not, no, it's not, not much. a whole lot of. Thankfully, that with. car scaled really well. Is it a lot longer than Justin's? Did you say? Yeah, it's like one hundred thirteen. Okay. On the driver's side. Yeah, that's pretty long. Justin's 109. So it's four oh. inches longer. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. I, I don't know how much longer you really would get with a car, though. 113 is long enough. Yeah, you wouldn't you go any longer than that. They used like to do 115. I think I pretty much got away from that. 113. Old Cadillac or something. Yeah, I mean, like the Pro Mods and stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, or like used to be 115, but I think even them, they've come back to 113 or so. So that's that's pretty long. Hmm. And do you guys, um, so in house, how far do you want to take a car? Do you want to like the car leaves running or would you want to take it? So the problem is because <laughs> like the wiring is like a whole different world almost. Yeah. No, I don't want to wire them. So we work with Omar at Area 51 and he mm -hmm. does a really good job. We've actually been just another step to try to, which this is kind of backwards, but we build the car. Yeah. We wire the car. We take the wiring back out, take the car apart and then have it powder coated. So a lot of people build the entire car, powder coat it, paint it, have mm -hmm. wired. I want to make sure the holes are drilled by us or the, you know, everything's mounted by us, holes drilled by us. If they need to add a tab, we can do it for a powder coat. I don't want someone scratching a car, chassis, climbing it out. Not that they yeah. would, but very particular about that. If there's anything we need to change, we can do it. For Takes a lot coat. of the uh, the other people screwing up right. out of the equation. Yep, exactly. Yeah, because then when you're in there wiring it, you can be kind of slinging around tools and stuff. You're not really worried yeah, exactly. about it. Yep. And there's probably so many little brackets you guys make for wiring oh, yeah. and stuff. and. Yep, drill and tap, all the clamps to hold it and everything. So we, well, that's how we've been doing the last three cars. That's worked good. He'll come mm -hmm. once everything's done and we have the car assembled. He'll come. It takes him like three days, two days to put it in. Oh, wow. That's so, pretty that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, we'll have it fired, put it back in in two mm -hmm. or three days, fired up, ready to go. Yeah, the new fuel tech stuff's pretty nice, especially some yeah. of the new stuff that that's they're coming way, out with. Yeah, that's the only way I'd go for sure. Yeah, that few, like even that new one that they were just talking about, Um, my tuner was like, it's the best thing in tuning in the last 20 years. Wow. That new one that they're talking yeah, the about. Is like, the, yeah. yeah. It's like you can wirelessly tune from the starting line. <laughs> wow. Like live watching yeah, everything. Yeah, they, they've definitely pushed and pushed to, to keep innovating for sure. And it's really cool because... You know, they bring you up to their, you go up to their dyno, oh, yeah. they strap yep. in, and they yep. kind of, like, take care of everything. I don't know how far Monzo's got with his car yet. I don't think he's done dyno, so I think Petty, Petty's tuning for him, Steve mm -hmm. Petty. And Steve Petty's tuned so many of those, I think he said just take it to the track. For the most yeah. part, they could take it to the dyno if they wanted to, but he said they have so much data on them, they're just going to take it to the track, so. That makes sense, especially when you, you got an engine that's probably already been on the engine dyno and stuff, yeah. too. Yeah, It's like, you, it's not that big of a mystery. And, right. Yeah, it's not like some new combo and you change different crank or yeah. different turbo or different head. You know, everything's pretty. You got to get drivability just right. Right. Yeah. 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 No drivability. <laughs> just so. has to go wide open yeah, throttle. That's it. I that's think it. people All don't realize off. that. That's it. <laughs> a lot of like streetcar guys don't realize that about mm -hmm. race cars is they just need it to be on and off switches. They don't oh, really yeah. need to no, like. That's it. They don't really need to do anything too crazy, nope. especially blower cars like Swan Jumps. You're spraying yep. fuel yes, in yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's pretty cool. Even some of the um. Like, the local no-time cars have gotten so crazy out it of is hand. It's insane. Like, the, um, what one, the the black one with the four zoomies out the side. Um, is uh, it? Mike Stravino? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Dude, yep. that thing I was watching oh, yeah. a couple weeks ago racing, that thing's beautiful. Oh, yeah, it is. It's a really nice car. Man, that oh, thing's yeah. like a work of art. I love he the zoomies has, that he's he has. the same way. His stuff's always really nice. Yeah. I love the four zoomies like I, that. They just changed it. He put regular zoomies on it now. Oh, did he? Yeah. But I like that. I know. The collector style zooming. Yeah. yeah. It does look cool. It does look cool. That's a cool way to do it. That yep. That's a big car, too. Big car. Yeah, the Novas are big. So we did Brian Markowitz's the same car. But yeah, they're big. Bigger yeah. cars, too. Yeah. Um, we got uh, Lights Out coming up here, too, soon. Mm -hmm. Soon enough. I'm yep. curious to see what goes on no? with that. Do you run there or no? They have a streetcar class yeah, now. Really? Okay. Eighth mile streetcar. But for two Js, they said one power adder still. Oh, really? I'm like, how are you going to do that? I'm going to get <laughs> yeah, freaking right? driven over on top of by a coyote car. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> like, like, you can't, you, you just can't give me one power at or I can't be competitive. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, yeah. you guys did the 2J deal. You probably 
plan to spray that thing with. They said they weren't gonna, but I, they like I said, they haven't really made enough yeah. of licks with it though. It, I don't know what transit had in it. It's well, got a Liberty five speed. Yeah, you can get away with, with it with a, yeah, yeah. You can do the it. The automatic's with, the problem. The yeah. torque converter getting a spool. Exactly. Yeah. And those you kinda need that too, because if you put a lock up on a small motor, you're gonna see a small motor come out <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right under yeah. your the pieces. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah That's, it's hard on them. I have that conversation with people all the time. They're like, put a lock up on it. I'm like, Shh. Yeah. You want to see what a stock block uh -huh. 2J looks <laughs> yeah. like with a lockup? Oh, yeah. Pieces. Yeah. Time to put the billet one in there. It'd look really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for a minute. For a brief second. <laughs> yeah. Because Victor had that booger car, and they would... Oh, yeah, they sprayed that car. Yeah, they were spraying that car a yeah. good amount. Oh, but yeah. it was heavy, too. Is it, was... it heavy? I, I mean, I, I guess... It's pretty, pretty heavy, right? It's kind of relative, I guess. Pretty factory floors and stuff yeah. still, kind of. It's, it's kind of weird when you talk about weight on a car and how fast a car is. It's so relative. Yeah, and like, for sure. Like, I say my car's slow to somebody like you, but then to 50 other people at the track, they're like... It's fast. Real oh, yeah. fast. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of no, have I to, agree. like, catch right. myself a yeah. little bit. I'm like, oh, I hate to be like, oh, it's slow mm -hmm. when it's going, you know, 790s oh, in yeah, the quarter. still fast, though, yeah. Plenty fast, mm -hmm. but then... I don't know. It's for tough. what for what it is, it's fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a dedicated just full street race car. I mean, so yeah. So, um, what other classes do you think Monza will run then? What do you think he's going to do? So with I don't. It now? He's not going to do MPK. Yeah, he's not um, no MPK now because all that stuff. Um, so I think he's just going to do no prep stuff. Nice. So we'll see. Hopefully, he does good. He, he's um he was going to run Outlaw Armageddon. I think it's something coming up that he's going to oh, yeah, run. Yeah. But I think now he hasn't tested it yet. Still. Um, so I think he's just going to go bring the car there, and they want him to just have the car on display. So I think he's going to not race there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully test soon after and, and start racing it, so we'll see. Yeah, some of those cars are interesting. Like, some big events will actually pay oh, yeah. people like that to come and do even exhibition runs. Like, oh, you don't fit any classes? Whatever, come yep. do some exhibition runs. They did yep. that at TX2K. They had, um, they had the GTR out, and then his teammate, I'm trying to... Um, they're on Justin's team now, but the No Prep oh, King yeah, yeah, GTR. Oh, yeah, Jim Howe and uh, Odom. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had Odom and Jim yep. out there, and they were just doing exhibition mm -hmm. runs, and they were just... Yep. People like to see just it. Just bring the crowd. Yeah, bring it's a crowd. cool to see a big, yep. blown, freaking oh, yeah. Hemi pull up there. Oh, yeah. Yep, they're obnoxious, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you're oh, yeah. a mile away, and you're like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was like a right. final farewell to that track as they tore it yeah, down. Yeah, that's it. That's the last. Man, that sucks. It's gone. That's they it. are. They tore it down, like... Two wow. weeks after. So what are they going to do next year? Uh, Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, okay. we're going out to Dallas. Cool. I've never which... been there. You've been there? Yeah. Have you? Very yeah. nice track? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. You know when we had Leroy, I used to go everywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys went all over the place. <laughs> yeah, so um, we'll do some backstory on that. So you were like the guy that kind of took Leroy as we showed up yeah. with some stock-ish Corvette that just had no body panels, yep. and we are like, it needs an exo cage. Yep. And you had to take the difficult deal of, like, it has to look cool, mm -hmm. be correct and safe, yep. and also somehow be an exo cage. <laughs> yeah, that was wild because, well, at first I think there was still a possibility of maybe doing it inside. Mm -hmm. But he's he's huge. Like, there's no yeah. way in a car small. There was no way we are going to put a cage inside and, and him fit still. Um, which I think putting it outside made it, like, super unique. So that yeah. was cool. I'm glad we did it that way. But. Yeah, that was wild. It's cool that that cage is still, Yeah, it is still like the part of the car. Because, yeah. I mean, that was, yep. like you were saying, 2017, 2018-ish. Yeah. yeah, the beginning of 17. Yeah. Yep. And that cage is still like the core of the car. Yep. It's been added to, obviously, yep. plenty of times. Yeah, it's got a bunch now. I think Troy was the one that ended up doing like some of the other bars. Yeah, they went to the to funny it. car cage. I think did a dash bar and stuff when Troy was still there. Yeah. And then I think Ty did the back stuff. But, yeah, it's it's cool to see that car still still doing good. It's fast now. I mean, it's, yeah. it's crazy. I mean, it was probably crazy when we were like, yeah, we're going to leave it stick shift. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> It is. And Corvettes are kind of cool because they have so much frame rail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, they have, like... Oh, yeah. Uh, people don't realize they have, like, this, you know, massive sections of frame rail everywhere yep. on them that you can tie into. Oh, yeah, they do. The yep. non-Z06 ones, at least, you can tie into because mm -hmm. they have they have steel frames. The, yeah, the ones aluminum. The aluminum ones yep. suck you got bolt-in plates uh -huh. and never feel safe. It was safe. a perfect candidate for that. I mean, yeah. it was a really cool deal. All bent up and stuff. And back then, he was still, like, drifting. with Wasn't it kind of like a drift... It did really everything. It was whatever yeah. then. Now it's obviously now it's pretty dedicated drag car, but yeah, because Matt, when we were there, like Matt was a big like push to 
like drag racer. W- like he he was kind of just like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like what do you want to do with the car? Uh-huh. He was like, you're leaving stock brakes on it. Like you're not putting skinnies on it to go drag race. And we were yeah. kind of just like, oh, we don't want to do that. Uh huh. And then finally, it was like the push to do enough it. Is enough. And you still had the white car at the time. Yeah. Yep. And I remember you went out there. I rem- we were there the week before you re- you wrecked it. Yep. And then, like, three weeks later, you had fully rebuilt it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We wrecked it. I wrecked it bad. <laughs> I wrecked it. Uh, I bought the car, and I front-halfed it because, to put the motor in it. Uh, and when I wrecked it, it broke the chassis, the whole back of the chassis off. Um, so, yeah, we cut the whole back off, quarters, windows, tubs, all mm-hmm. sheet metal, the whole back of the chassis, new front end, because we were trying to go to, to Georgia for the yeah. race. What were you doing with that car at the time? What class? No time. So it was a ni- big nitrous, yep, no time car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was a pretty nice car, though. Yeah, I liked it. I liked yeah. it. It was fun, but it was uh, expensive. I mean, I I had it, built it, and uh, I think the third. We never even made a full pass. Crash it on the first like three thirty hit, mm-hmm. and then uh, we burned it up the second full hit at Georgia. So and that was it. Decided to build other people's cars. Well, at that point, I was I just left Profab. I just mm-hmm. got in the shop, so it was like if I, I can't do both. You know, I can't, there's no way I yeah. can fund both. If I want to put a real effort into the shop, I got to get rid of the car. So. That's kind of the double-edged sword of working in the car community. Yep. When you work for other racers and stuff, like tuners kind of fall into the same deal. They can't really have their own yep, car exactly. going. Cause yeah, that's pretty much exactly it. Yeah, so you kind of had to make the decision, yep. oh, am I going to just work on other people's junk? Or Which, honestly, at this point, like as fast as these cars are, someone like Justin that drives a lot or, you know, people that drive a lot need to drive those cars. Those yeah. cars, for a car I would want, I'd want a car similar to that. And I really don't have no bit any business driving one unless I drive a lot and I don't have the time to drive a lot. So yeah. for me, I get just as, as much enjoyment out of seeing a car we built do good at the track as I would if I had my own. It's a lot cheaper. Yep. So yeah, and it, I mean it's pretty much the same deal watching like a CJ race cars banner yeah. go down the track and exactly be competitive and awesome. Probably yeah, I can imagine that's the same amount yeah, of joy. It is. It's like it's like watching your kid do something. You know, really. Yeah. That's, that that's the best part. You go you go to the track and see him do good and make good hits and, and people talk good about it. it's awesome. How much like how much do you help with that? Because that's where I feel like it's tough. Because you know I don't see you going to no prep kings races like. But you also have to know these chassis and how they work, and mm-hmm. they're they're different. So you kind of have to like. So setting up the chassis wise, th- this goes back to like cars at this level yeah. are pretty much like uh, like when we first did Justin's. That was like the first car I did to that magnitude, probably you know. Um, and we talked to Eric Dillard, owner Pro Line, Steve Petty on the phone, and Justin, you know, a three way, and they they pretty much have you know that like I said they have I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of these engines out there in combo so. They have somewhere they want the motor. They have somewhere that's going to be, you know, if Petty's going to help, he wants the motor here. He wants the frame rail here. He wants the cross member there. This is what he wants. So, oh, okay. And pretty much from there, you know, we'll put something basic in it. But as soon as it gets out there, the, the tuner, ha- the way some tuners want the car to squat, some want it to separate, some, you know, so they kind of just do their thing once they get the car. So interesting. Cause I feel like I, you would almost have to know that before you even started on the chassis is like how you want it to act. But I guess. If you give them such a moldable form, right, where they can do what they want, there's yep. enough bar angle adjustment. You can kind of yep. do whatever at that point. So you just give them enough, basically like a mm-hmm. some kind of play doh, I guess you could Pretty say. Much. Where yeah, they can, I mean the cars now have so much adjustment. Like you said, they have the four uh, bars. You can move in eighth inch increments, which is probably more than you need. But yeah, that's what we put. Uh, the front strut cups. Obviously, you can raise or lower the car an inch and a half. So if you're on a bad track, you can raise a car, better track, you lower it. You can do a lot of stuff. So, um, And there's pretty standard, like, cross-member heights we set it at, and that, that's what works. So you, you also run into, as people figure out more stuff or newer shock technology and stuff, they come out with a, well, now this works better, now that works mm-hmm. better. So then we do change our cars to that, but you know any feedback. Justin's giving us feedback. Clay's giving us feedback. You know, people at ProLine have given us feedback. So all that helps, and everyone's trying to work together to make a better product. So. Yeah, I think he he just switched to the Noonan deal in his Justin. Justin yeah, yeah. Yep. that's a pretty cool looking yeah, motor it too. It is. It's it's like jewelry. Yeah, so I love it. Because yeah. the he did have the Pro Line deal for a while, and yep. that was that was a s- awesome setup. Obviously, oh, yeah. everybody knows Pro Line. Yep. It'd be cool. It's going to be cool to see how this season kind of mm-hmm. unfolds for him with the new yep. setup and new maintenance routines oh, and everything. Yeah. Yep. 
like you were saying, it's just a whole animal. It is. It is. It's crazy. It's more than I uh, more than I care to deal with. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm more of a gas and go type yeah, of guy. Yeah, absolutely. It's enjoyable, like you said. It's it, you have to have do it full time to do what he's mm-hmm. doing. It's it's a lot of work. Yeah, and there's so much like it's cool how they've also included the small tire guys into that. Like yep. the that seems like it's it its whole thing in itself now is yep. they have like the small tire no prep guys which are probably going to get out of hand. Oh yeah. If they sure. already haven't fully gotten out of hand, oh, they're yeah. they're probably right there on the cusp mm-hmm. of uh getting out of hand, which will be uh which will be cool to see in itself. I really like the uh all steel all glass classes. I think I think it needs a couple more rules at this point. Yeah, to sl- kind of bring it back to something yeah, realistic. Just to kind of slow them down a little. Yep. But I think that class can really uh really shine. Mhm here shortly which i think they're gonna run that in georgia too right i think they are it seems like they're opening up to more classes maybe since rvw and stuff yeah trying to open up some more i think what donald does is he's taken out like some of the uh some of like the bracket style classes yeah yeah and adding more that's cool which Which is what people want to see exactly it's it's not a the bracket stuff's good you know obviously but um if you're a bracket guy for, for for spectator wise it's better to have you know consistent racing going on that's fun to watch if you're a bracket guy, bracket racing is great. Yeah. But, to watch, it's not. Yeah. My wife was asking me about bracket racing. Uh, my stepson wanted to do junior dragsters, we talked about it, and I was like, junior, I'm a drag guy. You know, obviously junior dragsters is cool, but we got him into go-karts instead because I'm like, bracket racing is like, have you ever been to a bracket race? She said, no. I said, there's a reason because nobody watches. Bra- unless you're bracket yeah. racing, nobody watches them. No you know, one else so. has been either. Yeah, so we got into go-karts instead for now. So when he can, you know, race something heads up and he still wants to do it, then we'll do something there. But you build a titanium chassis go-kart? Not right? yet. It does have some titanium parts on it. There's not much to them. Those, the no, go-karts are awesome, It though. is cool. Oh, it, yeah. It teaches so much driving it skill. It is insane. Because we did a lot of that with um, Jeremy from Auto. At Faster oh, really? Problems, he, yeah. his son's always go-karted, mm-hmm. so they were always doing the tire changing in the trailer and stuff. Like, they yep. were full go-karted out, but I am still convinced that the most fun you can have on, like, a budget is go-karting. A hundred percent. When I was a kid, I wanted a go-kart, and we mm-hmm. didn't have the money or time or whatever, so I just never did it. So I was like, he wanted to do it, so we got into it, and uh, he had done it for, like, three months. We went, like, twice a week, every week. You know, I'm trying to—he wants yeah. to be good. I, I don't mind putting in the time for him to do it, so— uh, I got one. I ended up getting one. And mine's like a 125cc. His is a 60cc. Yeah. So I'm like, listen, bud, you got to realize I'm going to come out there and I'm going to I'm gonna be way faster than you. Just don't get upset. This go-kart's supposed to be faster than yours. I wasn't even close. <laughs> I went through the dirt twice, over two curbs, <laughs> back yeah. two sprockets. and Because uh, it has a lot to do with driving. And he had been mm-hmm. driving so much. Like the first couple times when I went out there, it was like a minute lap time. And now he's doing like 49 seconds. And I couldn't even, I was like three seconds slower than him. My go-kart's 30 miles an hour faster. Yeah. It's like, it takes a lot of, it's a lot about driving. Well, weight's important too. All of a oh, sudden, huge. like, yeah. Yeah. we, we used to do this, um, one up in Anderson. We would That's go there. That's where we go. Oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And they do league nights. And oh, I right. did that a few times. And With you the have, rentals? Yeah. You have okay, to add cool. weight. So like, oh, really? they, they weigh like one of the heavier guys there and everybody has to match his weight. Makes sense. So if you switch carts, you have to pick up your little weight plate yeah. and put it with you. So everybody's kind of even, mm-hmm. which makes it pretty fair and fun. But then, you know, a kid obviously is going to be, you're right. You know, a hundred <laughs> yeah. pounds lighter. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. So you can only add so much weight Yep. <laughs> as, as drag racing is, it's mm-hmm. similar where you have to add your weight, Oh yeah. but you have to add it right next to you. So you don't yeah. be nice if you could. Move it around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's like that's like with him with his class. He so he's raced at Anderson twice, actual race. We test her a lot, but um, yeah, he has to add like I think twenty five pounds to make weight. Yep, that's interesting. So. Yeah, because it adds a lot, and then the seats, how low they get sometimes. Oh, it's crazy. You, you drag and you bump a little bit. Oh yeah, that's a good track up there. They have a it is. they have a nice layout. Very competitive people. So we started racing at Showtime because mm-hmm. uh, they do some there. Um, the rowdy round track? Well, yeah, they do, but they run it through the middle and they change courses, so you do some different stuff. But it was actually perfect, so I bought his go-kart from a guy that raced out there, was yeah. a president out there, and uh, he helped us a lot get going, and we raced out there. And, and the kids out there, it was fun because they weren't super competitive. And then we went to Anderson, and it was like last place by like a, you know, yeah. because they're comp- these people are really competitive. These kids have go-karts. Just to show you how competitive they are, Last week we were out there, and I'm I'm bad about it. I just like Justin's car when it broke. I want to fix it because I'm I, mm-hmm. I don't give up easy ever. <laughs> Bring the so, welder to the track yeah, with like, you. <laughs> so he blew up his motor in testing. And I'm like, we don't have a motor. We don't have a spare motor. Yeah. You didn't even know we could blow this thing up. Obviously, I had a lot of hours on it, but so I went up there. They have like a shop there, 
and uh, you guys have an engine? Oh, actually, one of our customers is selling his engines. He moved his 10-year-old son to Italy to continue racing. So they got a renegade stacker outside for this guy's stuff that they're yeah, selling. Yeah. 10-year-old kid, they have 14 brand new engines, six chassis. So he could rotate out engines and set yeah, it back yeah. and get built. So we get him a new engine and kept going. But that's how crazy some of these people are like wild about go karting. It's crazy. Well, it's interesting because it's, it's actually becoming like that in the drift world too, where really? like 10 year old kids are getting like full blown drift cars. But if you look at all like the professional F1 drivers, mm -hmm. they all started yep. as kids. Yep. So if, if, yeah, if you want to be competitive, if you want to be it. competitive at that level, yeah. same with like drifters now, sure. I think in the next 10 years. All the insane. top drifters are going to be like, oh, I started, you know, 10 years old. Crazy. And that's like, that's where you'll get that leg yep. up. Yep. And in drag racing, you don't really need that as much. You're right. You yeah, just kind of let off a button. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, there obviously is. <clears throat> the biggest thing with drag racing is, uh, try to explain to somebody that's never been fast. Like, if you've never been fast and you go fast for the first time, you're the chance that you can react fast enough to a problem. Like, if it's mm -hmm. going straight, anyone can drive it. You yeah. know, but reacting to a problem, it's almost like a video game. Like, it goes by so fast. Um, if, and the more you do it, it's like you get used to like looking around and stuff. But at first, it's really just yeah. reacting to the problem is, is the biggest thing. The first time you you go fast, you're just kind of like you yeah, know, oh, just nothing going <laughs> yeah, on. Right. And then like the fifth time, you're just like da, 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 yeah, it is. It really is. Like is this thing broken? It feels slow. Uh -huh. It's yeah. kind of it's it's unfortunate how quickly it feels slow. I know. Because then it's addicting. You want to go faster and faster yeah. and faster. Yeah, it, it's bad for like us because we. I want to go faster and faster. But like somebody like in NHRA Pro mm -hmm. Mod, they can't really go faster and no, faster. It. They just got to yeah. win the next race. So that's they're kind of capped at yep. least. Yep. But like with us hey, in street car, there's still some room. There's plenty of money yeah. to be spent still. Yep. <laughs> to oh, get yeah. like you know five tenths off or yep. Like we're talking big swings. Oh yeah. You're talking like, you know, yeah, a thou. Yeah. yeah if you could get lucky, like a, yeah. Oh, you yeah. could get a couple hundreds off for ten grand, you're in the right <laughs> yeah, you're oh, going yeah. the right direction. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. I mean these guys go into like these MH sevens and stuff or whatever, you know, these are hundred and twenty thousand dollar engines hoping to pick up hopefully a couple numbers, you know, it's but that's how competitive it is. You have yeah. a couple numbers is, is a lot. Yeah. I mean so. people will spend that money if you say oh, yeah. hey for fifty grand. Yep. Take a couple numbers off. Yeah, well, oh, they'll yeah. they'll break out the checkbook. Oh, yeah, yep, like will. I know you know people do that with transmissions because mm -hmm. there's there's actually a good amount of options right now, which is kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. Like it for a long time, it was really just like turbo four hundred, turbo four hundred. But now like it seems like people are using some other stuff, which is cool oh, to yeah. see. Yep, yep. And like pro stock style stuff, and mm -hmm. kind of pulling from other yep. other ventures to get different weight levels and. Yeah, there's quite a few cars in MPK now actually running Liberties, I think. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. So like obviously no clutch that. stuff, but yeah. all converter stuff. It does make it cool, though, to have a Oh, yeah. Day. Oh, yeah. I think the five-speed is cool. It sounds cool, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Especially when you have, like, a turbo car. Helps a little mm -hmm. bit to keep it in the power band a little yep. better. Because, yep. unfortunately, the turbo cars are never really competitive enough. They're and consistent. Yeah. It seems like they're always, they can be fast, but it's like fast and then. Yeah, like Lutz's fast. car. I love that thing. But yeah, when it's fast, it's fast. But yeah. Other than that, it's, and he's he's at a conventional big block, I think. Is it a conventional yeah, big block? Yeah, it's not a Hemi. Thing? Yeah. Big block Chevy. Yeah, twin turbo, yep. big block. Yeah, that car's cool. And then um, another car that I'm really excited to see this year is Mark Mickey's car. Oh, yeah. He's, man, he came out flying with that thing. Yeah. It's like 218 or two something. Yeah. He was. Show like number up. two qualifier, I think, yep. wasn't he or something? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. crazy. Show up with a pro mod yeah. with twin turbos. <laughs> Which is like weird now. You know, I think Super there's probably weird. only two of them. Yeah. And then uh, what's the other guy's name? Uh, man, what's the guy that has a Wolverine car? I can't think of his name. It's a red 69 also. He's been he's been like 220. Oh, yep. Yeah, yeah. But I think those were the only two turbo cars. It's pretty cool. And yeah. especially like some of the trick stuff that they're kind of using to t spool it quickly. And yeah, oh yeah. There's so many like yep. cool tuning things that are involved in it. And, and I think that's a lot of fuel tech stuff yeah. coming out with that. I th they're using some of the electric wastegate yep, stuff to do it. that's a big thing. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's cool to see all the technology that people are mm -hmm. pushing and oh yeah, how much more stuff can get involved. I mean, even some of the stuff that you probably put in cars that you wouldn't have thought about five years ago on the chassis oh, side yeah. of things. Are probably so different and sensors yep. and the sport has been pushed like and it's to an insane limit just in a short period of time mm -hmm. like it's gone from like what it was like in the last five years it's it's crazy how and, far it's come. and you would think that that discouraged people too like oh there's all this like you know everybody's got all this technology and stuff mm -hmm. but it actually seems to have encouraged people I agree. to get involved in yep. it which 
you would think it would do the opposite. Yeah. But I, I mean, I hear from more and more people that there's cars getting built like oh, crazy. Yeah, it is. It is. It's crazy. Pro Mod has, you know, 40, 50 cars trying to qualify. Yep. I'm, I'd be curious to see how Ducks race goes because it's kind of like the feels like the beginning of the season a little bit for it. Yeah. Everybody's kind of just getting. Is this the, which one is this? No Mercy? This I think, yeah, no mercy. No mercy. I think the one in February is usually busier, right? They, but, yeah, I think so because it's a little cooler out. Yeah, I think the I think the one in February is usually busier, but I'd be curious to see how some of the small tire stuff goes mm -hmm. this year, just because of the massive big tire yeah. swing. I mean, and even like a lot of people from X two seventy five are started running like PDRA Super Street or mm -hmm. whatever it is. So yeah, PDRA is kind of blowing up a lot, which too. is weird. Yeah, it's been kind of. It has. It's been, been around for, what, 20 years? Yeah, and then and all, all of a sudden, sudden yeah. everybody's talking about it. It is. PDRA, like the Mountain Motor Pro Stock stuff or six yep. Outlaw 632 or the Pro Street or whatever it is. I actually got a car at the shop. The guy's running a 10.5, mm -hmm. PDRA 10.5. So it's a... Uh, what was great. that car that you were just posting? Is it like a 32 or something? something Which one is something Oh, the old. Willys? Yeah. It's a uh, 41 Will or 40 Willys. Oh, wow. Yeah. That thing's freaking cool. It is. It is really cool. That yeah. must feel weird to drive something like that. Because, yeah. like, you're not sitting like a race car. You're kind of like... Talk about different. Like, we were just talking about how tall Justin's car is. That car is like another, I don't know, like two feet taller. And it's really short. Yeah. And it's really narrow. Like, so where your butt is, it's like, it's normal. But by your feet, like a normal car, or rocker bars are uh, 60 inches or 56 inches wide. That car is like 38. So it's like that, like your feet are yeah, like, yeah. there's no room. Huh. And then if you put like a big bell housing transmission in there or how far back the motor set back. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a very weird car to build. So I was the customer, he, he's an awesome customer. He's from Canada. Uh, he's only, which when he first talked to me about the build, went to look for a Willys, those cars are like impossible to find. Mm -hmm. So he paid like a, a lot, like almost as much as like one of our finished cars for a car, and so then we cut, cut it up with a sawzall. And it's like this, this can't be right, you know. Like, yeah. But he he wants what he wants, and uh, so it's it's a pretty cool build. For Were sure. you able to like sell anything on that deal? Because like I imagine once you cut out, I and you're you only want like yeah. So a shell. I don't know. I'd have to show you a picture later. But we have the entire car. Like that car came in like a pro street, like beautiful. You could eat off the yeah. bottom of the floor car. Blower, big block blower, nine inch chrome, nine inch everything, and it's sitting on my loft. The entire car minus the shell. Like you could take it out in the parking lot, drive it around. Yeah. And it's just sitting up there. Looks like a little like uh, just like yeah, a like a doom skateboard buddy. kind so, of thing. Yeah. It's got a cage and everything. It's got like oh, a does it? Cage. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, like tweed interior, like all custom interior. Wow, that's actually kind of cool. Everything, fuel cell. Yeah, you might be able to cell. sell that thing. Yeah, he's been. He, I think he's posted it, but um, yeah, it's it's wild that we cut up. Yeah. I'm sure that's a that's a scary one to take a first cut on, oh, but yeah. I guess as a fab guy, you start to become numb to that stuff. Well, the hardest thing with that car is you can't buy anything, mm -hmm. so you can't. There's like not a plate like a Camaro you can buy quarters. There's one guy in Washington, uh, Roland is his name, and he's tough to get stuff from. But he makes bodies like he has wood bucks that he like hammers the bodies out of. Yeah, like he makes pieces. That's the only place you can get pieces for those cars. So when you get something like that in. Do you look at anybody else that's maybe done even something similar, or are you just like, yeah, kind of do it my way? I know what I'm going to do for certain stuff, like where you know tires, how they lower it. Because the biggest challenge we're having with that car now is how big a tire we want to run and how low we want to get it. Mm -hmm. um, like it, you can even see this in some of the MPK cars. Like I try to make all the cars we build that are steel look like a real car. Like I don't want the rocker to be this tall so that the quarter panel is up in there and it's it's raked. Like I try yeah, to avoid yeah. that if possible, just because it doesn't look factory. Um, so with this car, it has a real big hip on the side where the tire goes. So we're having a problem with that. So we, this is even crazier. Like right behind where the back window comes, we're probably going to like cut the entire car off and raise the back and somehow make it still look factory. It's going to be a ton of work. Oh, wow. So yeah. it, It'll probably be similar to like Bob's Jeep. I would imagine right. where you're kind of yeah. cutting and like, that's it. Making it not really Just making it work, but it looked like a Jeep still. Oh, but yeah. then when you look at it long enough, you're like, wait. Right. It looks short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it looks, like, thing. low. Like, uh, yeah, that was a cool deal. Cause that was cool. I, it, does he still have that thing? I, I think he I think he heard it. No, no, he, he wrecked his Mustang after. Wrecked a Mustang, which yeah. I think they've almost finished. But yeah. I, think they, I think he still has a Jeep. I think he took the motor out of the Jeep to put the Mustang or yep. something. Yep, it was just, there. like, a small block Ford in there. Yep. Matt loves those things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was, like, the, that was, like, the first time I really, like, saw anybody doing small block Ford stuff. Yeah. Now it seems like it's really grown it again, has some, yeah. in popularity. Yep. Like it, it's one of those weird deals where I guess people are like, oh, these actually are good. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> but I guess for the no prep stuff, it's probably pretty good because it'll make much torque. Yeah. All horsepower, kind of like a mm-hmm. 2J. Like yep. Hot, rev them high. I'm surprised nobody's done a 2J in a no prep. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's entire deal. So actually, Eric Lazinski talked about doing it. With, I don't mm-hmm. know if he's going to run a copper car or whatever they're going to run, but they talked about doing it. And he oh, was yeah, asking yeah, me yeah. a bunch of stuff on it, and I don't know if they ever did or not, but... I imagine he could probably do pretty well because he knows that car. Yeah, so yeah, they got like nine well. million laps on that car. Yeah, yeah. he knows that yeah. car. Oh yeah, it goes damn out there. Well. Goes, yeah, I'd sure. love to talk to him on here at one point, but yep. he he knows that car really good. I've oh, yeah. seen that car race. I feel like for the last ten years. Oh yeah, it's been forever. Yeah, that copper yeah. Supra from Titan, really cool one. Victor's copper cars. Is it coming out good? I haven't seen it. I, I've seen some pictures of it. I don't think he's shown too much, while, but yeah. that thing's looking pretty oh, nice, yeah. too. That's a vehicle car, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see that. But the No Prep King, or Street Outlaws did, like, a street-style one, mm-hmm. and there was, like, one or two 2J cars in there. Really? I, I wanted to go on, out to it. On the street, it, you're talking about? On the street street, like, their what? old street. Recently or no? It was, like, this past, like, year. Okay. And that was pretty cool. They they had like a couple hundred cars out there for like. Was that a, a Mega Cash Days deal? Um, no? I think it was similar to that. Okay. Where they kind of picked teams and they had like. Oh, okay, okay. Like a whole thing, yeah, like yeah. imports versus domestic yep. stuff too, and that was pretty cool. I didn't have a motor in my car at the time, unfortunately, yeah. but also I don't know if I could switch over to doing no prep. I've been so spoiled. Yeah, with the radial stuff. So spoiled with radial. And prep. they just drive. They do drive really good too when they drive when they mm-hmm. hook. They just drive so smooth. Yeah, I mean, it's either you made a pass or you, or you didn't. That's it. There's no, like, yeah. You're not, exactly. like, trying to save it. Uh-uh. No, there's no saving it. If you're in the gas long enough and you think you're going to save it and it's spinning, you're in trouble. Yeah, sometimes I've been very scared on the starting line watching yeah. people think that they're going to Oh yeah. pedal their way out of a radial tire car spinning. Yeah. But that's what happened at the last Ducks race is it was pair after pair. Just one either would spin or both would spin. Well, I think that's a lot of the reason people are going to big tires because 99% of the time you have a race. Mm-hmm. You know, you can salvage a run and, you know, you may be steering it, not not an ideal pass, but usually they get down a track. Yeah. So. I know. I like to see at least, like, a race. You're right. It yeah, happened. like, I mean, the World Series of Pro Mod deal was awesome. Like, every pass, everybody yep. was going down. Close, too. Hundreds of They were so close. That was a good race. Packed stands. Insane. I mean, even the Gator Nationals, they were posting a oh, photo. Oh, yeah, it was, like, sold out. Sold out Gator yep, Nationals. Yep. I was like, I can't believe mm. that. Like, I love to see it, but I, I was just surprised because yeah. in my mind, I was like, I, I didn't realize it was that crazy. Well, for a while, you hear like NHRA's slowing down, NHRA's not that good, yeah. and then you see that. It's, I mean, the, we we actually, uh, do you see that orange Camaro we fixed? That Pro Mod? Um, Billy Banaka. Which car? What, pro, what year was pro it? Mod, like a newer? 68. Um, I may have seen it, yeah. He, uh, he had an incident at, um, Bradenton the week before Gators and oh, we, yep. we fixed it like in a few days and brought it down there and uh, I delivered it and it was packed man you could hardly get in there to get to him I almost mm-hmm. had to unload it push it he had a fiberglass issue right he blew apart he, some fiberglass yeah he, uh, he hit the fence down there the parachutes didn't come out and he hit the oh. gate at the end of Bradenton yeah yeah so we had to fix a header uh fi- replace a rocker fix the front end paint the front end because NHRA I don't think it'll let you run like you can't just have some hokey pokey stuff. You, you gotta can't like use look. duct tape. It's got to look good. I don't think you. Could, I don't think they'd let you duct tape it. No, no. I think, I think it's got to look. They're pretty. And... They're pretty particular about it, like looking correct. Hmm. So. That's actually cool though for the spectators and stuff. Yeah. But they have some unique cars out there. There's some like weird, weird stuff that rolls up into NHR Pro Mod. I've seen some like. There's a couple of the Pro Nitrous cars that mm-hmm. are like. Still like '90s looking, and that's kind of oh, cool. Really? Yeah, I like seeing some like hmm. the older looking stuff. Like even like the nostalgia drags are kind of oh, fun yeah. to see. Yep. Like, I heard some rumor that NHRA Pro Mod is going to try to go to older cars, also kind of like what MBK did. Uh, like try to push for like a weight break if you're yeah. over a certain weight. I know. Have you seen Tim Wallace's '55? He just started running NHRA Pro Mod with Ken Cortuccio's driver. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a cool car. '55 yeah. Chevy. Ken's a good driver yeah, too, Ken so he's the, yep. the right person yep. to have he behind is. it. Yep. So, very yeah. cool car. That'll be cool. Yeah, because that, that's what I heard. Like, the new Camaro, like, the fifth gens are just too aerodynamic yeah. that even at the same weight, they yeah. have an advantage because that fifth gen Camaro body is so good. Yep. It's such a good... And then, like, the blower just sticks out a little bit, mm-hmm. so they're not all unaerodynamic because no, of the blower, and yep. they're they're good cars. And it's proven because they've won a bunch oh, yeah. with that chassis. Yep. Like, that body style has won a bunch. Mm-hmm. 
Dude, why is Justin so hard on stuff though? That's sir. <laughs> good question. <laughs> I don't know. He is. I mean, he's like a he's like a bull in a china shop. Yeah, you ever just so. call him before racing? You're like, dude. No. Can you just when he's not at a break race it? And he calls me. I already like I told him. I, said, I mean, <laughs> sometimes I don't even want to answer the phone because I know something's broke. Something's tore up. Yeah. All the time. They race really hard, and like I said, the maintenance and stuff. You got people like mine's just kind of on the other spectrum. Like when his black car, we fixed it, and he had it painted. Because he didn't want to miss race. You know, those guys get paid to show up. So yeah. he didn't like the way the paint turned out, so he missed the race. Oh, like wow. Justin would never worry about this. You know, there's people on both sides yeah. of that. But, um, He'd throw some wrap on yeah, there just, or something at least. Yeah, exactly. That's what I would do. I would yeah, try to make yeah. the race. Yeah, I mean, when you're getting paid good money to show up. Yeah. You know, it's hard for me to miss a race because of something like that. I know, for sure. The looks of a car. Yeah, Shit, exactly. if it's running, I'm going to be yeah, there. you can <laughs> fix it later, you know, so. But, yeah, Justin... He's hard on stuff. I don't know. Everyone asked me that. Yeah. He is very hard on stuff. Well, last year, he had a particularly hard year of breaking just, like, everything. Yeah. Just, like, things that I, I've dealt with that, too, where, you know, I call up a company. I'm like, hey, I broke this. And they're like, no, we've never seen that break before. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I, oh, I got a broken one right here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've dealt with that a few times. But that's that's part of the problem is mm-hmm. freaking parts that oh, yeah. shouldn't break. Often end up breaking and yeah, he had like a strut break in the parking lot, like pushing it out. Strut fell apart, wheel fell off it. He had a uh, racks break. We've had the same racks on like almost every car. Mm-hmm. Never had a problem. We've put like three racks on his car. Now it has a different rack. Finally, we finally yeah. just cut that rack off, put a different rack on totally. But it's had three new racks. I don't know. Never, never had a problem. He'd, I, he'd have it skip a tooth and then it'd be straight here and straight there, and it's like huh. I don't know. I don't know what the problem is, but that's weird. Yeah. I wonder, is it is that new combo, like, decent bit heavier than the old one? Can, like, the uh, screw compared to the Pro Charger? Yeah, the screw the, with the new in and to the, compared to, like, a Pro Charger. I don't Charger. think it's a ton heavier. Yeah. No, I, I don't think those so. Those screws just look heavy. Maybe they're they not do. as heavy yeah. as I imagine. But I don't, think it's, I don't think it's a ton heavier. If it is, it's not much. Yeah. It much. seems awesome to drive that thing, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's watching wild. him test it a little bit. Oh, yeah. And we're at Bradenton, and it's just, like, violence. Oh, yeah, it is. It's the only just, way to, Just like, that thing in front of you. I don't, I don't think I have any interest in driving anything like that. Yeah, you can almost hardly see the tree. Yeah, for sure. It's like right in the way you gotta look, look around it for yeah. sure. I like watching them bitch about the tree. It's kind of fun. Oh yeah, that's they one of the. That. It's one of my favorites. Oh yeah. Hey, you t- guessed. We just hell yeah, yeah, they do that. Oh, every time there's someone guessing for sure. They always get into big arguments about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, if somebody wants like, somebody rolls up to you right now and they're like, "Hey, I want to build a you know no prep king car." I don't care what body it is. Let's pick what's going to work the best. What what would you be looking at for bodies? Like That's a good question. Cuz there's some cool stuff out there. You can find something a little longer, maybe like a CTSV that's like The biggest a thing long. I think is is something that has available parts. The biggest problem we have with like Justin's car, we're going to it right now. So we ordered his old car as a as a 350 mm-hmm. and this one's a FR or whatever the other Yeah. Like some one, weird like, Lexus that he's the only right. one that races. So, there was a guy in Puerto Rico that makes the front end doors for this body, supposedly. So we got it, and it doesn't work. So now we're we're in the same boat we were in before. We're trying to use stock rockers and stock bumper, which is plastic. So mm-hmm. you can't really modify easily. Um, and now we're trying to modify the doors, modify the front end. Now we're trying to put a real grill and headlights. So if you build a 69 Camaro, you order everything and you have everything. And it's yeah. good quality stuff, and you can get it easily. With this, it's hard because... Like right now, we have a front end that's modified, and we can mount it and be done. But we can't because he's got to pull a, a mold off it. Because if something happens, we can't go through 300 hours of modifying another front end. Yeah, you know, he's got to be able to just pull it apart and put it on. So, I would say I would like to build anything that you can get parts for. But then the problem is you're running into a less aerodynamic car. But I guess you get the weight break. Right. But that's still a tough one. You're kind of counting on. Yeah. You're, you're like putting a lot of eggs like into that. Car. I like the the CTS. Yeah, I like that car. That car cool looks body. pretty aerodynamic yeah, too. Pretty cool body. It definitely uh, catches some attention. That thing oh, is yeah. bright. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is very bright. Yeah, that's yep. a cool car too for sure. And yep. there, there's a couple of Mustangs in there that are seem pretty good too. The newest body style Mustang seems like a really good one. Is there any in MBK? I, I don't know if there's oh, any. Oh, wait, they get, what's that, Manny Alvarez? or? I think so. Oh, yeah, he's got one. But that body style, there's a couple yeah. race cars, local look, even, yeah. that are like street car, race cars uh-huh. that have like solid rear axle and stuff. Yep. But that car seems like a pretty good start for good-looking race cars. Yep. There's um, there's like a brown one that 
that races um I can't think of it. It runs at uh runs at World Cup and it runs quarter mile, which is hmm. really Oh crazy. yeah, yeah, brown sugar. Yeah. Tim Tim Essick. To watch the Pro Mods yes. run quarter mile is a, yep. it's a crazy That's thing. That's an outlaw ten five car. Is it? Which is pretty much a yeah, Pro Mod with a yeah. ten five. And he may run a bigger tire there, but I think even Lutz last year ran quarter mile in his car. Yeah, he had the parachute mount rip off or just something. Just gone. Just yeah. Like I <laughs> dumped the chute and then just like Zoom. I guess they didn't expect to be going <laughs> yeah. 250. Yeah. 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 That's a and lot. That's I mean, you need a lot of shutdown for that. Yeah, that's crazy. Because even something like Bradenton, like, there's a lot of shutdown in Bradenton. I'd still be scared to run yeah, quarter mile on the shoots, fast. Uh, get problems quick. Even if you do get on the shoots, I guess. It's still, yeah, <laughs> it's still scary for sure. Dude, so your um, parts side of things, that's become pretty big on your on yeah. your deal. So I'd say it's like 50, 60% of our business now is parts. That's cool. So yeah. you kind of, I've seen you gotten some machines and stuff mm-hmm. to build stuff in house. Yep. And then have you hired people to like engineer that stuff or are you just kind yeah, of, I have, a, I have a designer and an operator. Oh, so, cool. Um, I work with him a lot hands on to do the new parts and stuff. So, yeah. But I saw you recently sold, um, you sold one of your, what is it? Lines of parts to someone. The buckets. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the leaf spring buckets. Yeah, that was a cool deal to like design and build something yep. and be able to like actually sell it to somebody else. Yeah. That's a And cool. we uh we made those. That was like one of my first parts I ever made like 6 years ago, 17. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 6 years ago. And uh it was a great we've sold a ton of them. But the the direction we're going it was kind of not really our thing, so we just and it fits them. He owns uh Jason Digby, you know him? I I don't know him, but it, he I know owned, the business, he, yeah. And he, from the very beginning, he gave me the chance, and he sold my stuff. And he owns, like, a Leaf Spring Nation mm-hmm. and a Mags Fab, so they do yep. chassis work. Um, so that's him. Yeah, Mags does some pretty nice yeah, stuff, too, does. with, like, um, fire suppression kits they and things like really that. Nice stuff, yep. Yeah, they cool to cool to sell a full line to somebody like that. Yep. And those those are interesting. I was looking at them, too. So they, they slide to adjust or... So they adjust, you can adjust the front hole. So before, if you had a leaf spring, you just kind of stuck in a factory mm-hmm. hole. And they're not, the, the sheet stamped out sheet metal piece is not, you know, super rigid. So we did that and made a rocker piece that welds on the car and bolts to that. So it's pretty rigid also. It's weird seeing leaf spring cars go like fast, oh, fast. Insane. Like four, I think, uh, what did that know go? 402 or yeah. something like that's... Lyle Barnett was big on the leaf spring with his uh, tooth jerker for a while well, that's there. Jason Digby's. Oh, is it? Yeah, Jason yeah. Jason Digby owns yep. tooth jerker, yeah. Yeah, that car's awesome. Yeah, it it's, is cool. And then um, Doug Cook's Nova has always been on Leaf Springs yeah. too. And that, is it still on Leaf Springs now? I don't know if it still is with. I don't know if they after he redid everything. Not. I hope he's not on Leaf Springs anymore. I don't know. I don't know if they. I know they did a lot of stuff to it, but yeah. I wasn't sure. What, I don't know if they did anything to the back. That's a good looking car now. It that, is a cool car. Yeah, there's something cool about a Nova. That's my favorite car. Is it? Yeah, seventy Nova. Seventy Nova. Yeah. Yeah, you've gotten to work on quite a few of them. Yeah. I imagine yeah. then too. Yeah. Oh man. Dude, it's so freaking so freaking cool to hear from all this stuff. Like the titanium and like all that like business side of things is really cool too. I don't know, like the part sales stuff is seems like what could be your your biggest thing, obviously. Yeah. You guys have anything cool on the uh works then? Uh yeah, we always have a bunch of new stuff we're trying to do. Um trying to just bring more stuff in house. Uh like a lot of our flat parts and tabs and brackets that go to other parts. We have water jet or laser cut. And, mm-hmm. uh, we're trying to get a laser so we could do all that stuff in house. So, if we had a laser and a press brake with the three CNCs we have, we could pretty much make anything in house. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the goal right now is making everything we already have more efficient uh, instead of just adding more and more stuff. And then we have to rely on you know just Doug. I'm sure they pretty much do everything yeah. they can in house. You know, and that's then you can control your deadlines. Uh, we just had a problem with. Uh, the water jet place we use and one of our wings took nine weeks to get you know it's very hard to tell a customer yeah nine weeks to wait on a wing so trying to trying to work on the efficiency of that keeping a lot more stuff in stock of what we already have uh, and then move forward so yeah and then all the titanium side of things is like when i was there you had a ton of titanium yeah we stock a ton of that stuff now (laughs) we make all our own tube adapters clevises um, parachute mounts, foiling bars, wishbones. Yeah. And we stock all that stuff now, too. So Seems like the anti-roll bar stuff is a pretty good one, too. Oh, yeah. Yep. Our yeah, anti-roll the, bar has been a really the good big one. Johnson, yep. the big Johnson. And now the... Uh, the Average Johnson. Average Johnson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Those... those uh, The Average Johnson actually seems like a really good 
part for like the masses. That's what, yeah, that's what we did. And it's, and it's done really well so far. Yeah. Yeah. That seems like a really solid one in the billet end links on there and stuff. Cause mm -hmm. everybody needs an anti roll bar. I see a lot of people that don't have them in them. It's pretty, uh, one of the biggest parts of the car for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. I need to, uh, I, I've been trying. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to learn chassis stuff more and more like from my car, mm -hmm. but I have a torque arm and there's oh, only okay. so much you could do with a torque arm. Yeah. Because they're kind of like this weird, mysterious things that sometimes catch <laughs> right. the pinion angle uh -huh. and want to drive the car up. And sometimes they don't. And it's kind of just a roll the dice a little bit. Uh -huh. Like the prep and how, like tire pressure, I've noticed the tire pressure and track prep. Very important. Are the most important thing to whether my car wheelies or not, mm -hmm. which is really weird. It'll <laughs> dead hook. And not wheelie, and then it'll dead hook and wheelie on too tight of a track. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. That car is super <laughs> temp temperamental on yeah. that stuff. I think I just need to bite the bullet and get some, like, real shocks and actually spend some on? money. Some two-year-old Vikings that have been beat to crap. Nothing wrong with them. They've been yeah. good to me, but, yeah. you know, they're yeah. beat up at this point. I've been yeah. hard on them, <laughs> trying to go a little faster on them, you know. If you started over, would you build the same car? Probably or did you not. Just have that car, and that just kind of grew with it. The problem is, I love F bodies. Mm -hmm. I like the look of them, but I know that it's not the best chassis to start with, right. and that's the tough part about mm -hmm. drag racing. Is everybody wants to have a unique car and a cool car. Not that F bodies are either of those, but I like them. They're pretty nice cars. I like them. They're yeah. not unique, but yeah. you know, I know deep down I should just go out and buy a Fox body. Be a thousand pounds lighter right off the bat, probably. And it would still have all <laughs> of its all of its things that it needs to be a street car. Yep. But I just can't I can't get myself to do it as much as I would yeah. I would love to. And especially because like I could sell that car as a roller probably. Oh yeah. Buy a roller because mm -hmm. I I don't know if I could do another chassis trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a lot. <laughs> Even though like um, Profab did awesome job every time mm -hmm. it was there, it's just you can basically save like 50 cents on the dollar oh, to absolutely. just buy a car that somebody has lost interest in or absolutely. thought the, yep. ran out of money 90 percent of yep. the way through because that happens oh yeah well a lot of people get into it and they think you know they don't just like earlier you said something about you know get the chassis done and then that's the most part of the car or whatever mm -hmm. but people don't realize how much more is after that you know so like we talked about 1800 hours building yeah. a car the chassis part of it's like maybe 300 of that yeah so you have 15 after the chassis is done there's 1500 more hours so like it's a long process all the tabs mm -hmm. and sheet metal and body mounting and that's what really takes a lot of time window lips like all our window lips are handmade everything's handmade really shrinker stretch yeah to fit perfect like we don't just buy strips that have a four inch hole center like everything's corner corner whatever that is perfect mm -hmm. hole spacing just it takes forever. Yeah, and then it's all those, like, little things, like, you know, go try to drill 10 holes in your car nicely. You're right. Oh, Don't yeah. make a mess. Yep. And then also fit bolts in there, like, calculate how long that takes and the parts that you just spent to do it. Oh, yeah. And those little things, like, cars will nickel and dime you to death, oh, especially insane. once you... Then you talk to your tuner, and he's like, I want this sensor, that sensor, that one, every yeah. shock sensor. Yep. And you're like, oh... Wait, fifteen thousand dollars worth of electronics. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then you want to put two ECUs in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, an extra one just for just in case. Just so I can read stuff uh, like Monza put. <laughs> yeah, the race pack. Yeah. I think that's a common thing though, because I've heard from other race pack people that the G meter. It's like they love it. Yeah. Like if you like, it's the easiest to read. It's mm -hmm. the easiest like. Yeah, he's got all it. kinds of. We put a weather station in the car. Really, like it has a lot of yeah, has a lot of stuff. There's sure. some cool stuff now with the weather stations oh, yeah. that they can have. Yep. And I don't know. Some of that sensor stuff is real cool. Mm -hmm. And and all those brackets that you put in that car to like hold DCU is that all titanium? Then oh, I would yeah. imagine. Yep. Yeah, How, the fuel tech's on the on the steering column, which is titanium, and then the the race packs in the center where he wanted it, and it's all titanium with little clevises that pins in and out, so we can mm -hmm. move it. So how much um like. Where do you um, kind of draw the line on chassis having titanium versus just, like, accessories, I guess? Because, you know, you can't build a full chassis out of titanium, right? That wouldn't no. pass a cert. Mm -mm. But then you can't weld titanium to stainless. Right. No, you so, can't. Yeah, it's pretty much anything that bolts on. So, like, the Scion has the most titanium because that was originally my personal car when I built it, yeah. which got sold. But um, 
the whole dual frame rail and all the gussets and uprights was all titanium, all the way from the seat bar, all the way out to the front, and then everything from the shocks back was all titanium. Okay. Body mounts, everything. So basically just the chassis that has to be SFI 4130 mm-hmm. was 4130. Everything else was pretty much titanium. How how light could that car have gotten then? Or can I think get? that car with fuel, water, like all the water in the uh, tank mm-hmm. and all the fuel was like 1940, 1920. So like raceway being like 2,100 pounds? Yeah, with a driver. Yeah, with the yeah. driver, like, geared up, yeah. ready to go. Wow. That's and the only thing, we, we probably could have, uh, that's a fiberglass body, not carbon, so we mm-hmm. probably could have saved some weight there. And the front end, like I was telling you earlier, we modified the front end. Instead of pulling a mold, we just kind of left it modified. So the front end, we could probably save 25. We could probably get an 1890 with a you know, carbon body and, and Holy pulling crap. a plug. But, way. like, what could that run in, then? Uh, I think you only had to weigh 2,200 pounds in the extreme import. Oh, yeah, Which, yeah. really, there's really no class. Yeah, that's what There's I was really wondering. No like, I don't know where you. Even it's just run that. Uh, who has the fastest import. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, because that could break any any two J record you wanted to break. Because you know people often ask me, they're like, "Oh, go for like stock block record." I'm like, yeah, "This doesn't really make sense in a thirty two hundred pound car." <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You could put a stock block in that thing <clears throat> and go oh, lift yeah. it. You know. Yeah, probably six hundred feet. Probably. <laughs> probably go five nineties. I think you probably go five nineties with stop blocking a car. Oh man, that was. You see, like you could just break any record you yeah. want, something like that. Oh yeah, that was a cool car. Even the way that the exhaust comes on that thing, mm-hmm. like I love how it's like all single collect all, like it doesn't have just like a regular two J style mm-hmm. exhaust. It all kind of comes down into one in the turbo in like a pro mod looking mm-hmm. like turbo location, like firewall mounted turbo yep. on a. <laughs> on a 2J is such, like, a funny-looking thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was de- definitely different for us. That's the first import I ever really did, so it was pretty They're cool. easy. Everything's kind of, like... It is. One side or another, you know, cold here, super, hot here. Super impressive what those little engines can do. It's, and that it's was on... Wild. It even had an intercooler, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow, yeah. yeah. That's pretty crazy that you guys even intercooler. Intercoolers? I do. Yeah, you have to, yeah. But I don't know freaking... I don't know. I don't run methanol either. <laughs> yeah, true. true. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I yeah, figured you can kind of get run, away with How it. much boost do you run? Like 65 pounds. So they run like 110 in those. <sighs> yeah. So. It's kind of like the uh, the diesel stuff. Like a lot. They leave the line at like 60. Yeah, that's what I do. I leave like, the line at like 60. I leave the line at like what I'm going to have Whatever's down track. Going. Really? Yeah. Wow. Like it doesn't. Like, people are like, oh, yeah, you leave and then it feed it in. in. No, it's <laughs> like, in. It's what? all there. <laughs> like, the gates are closed. Yeah. So yeah, it won't do no more. That's it. Like, it's <laughs> ramped in. Nitrous yeah. is on. Like, I don't... How big a turbo is on it? It's um, 80, 86, 85. Okay. Yeah, so it's, not, it's a yeah. good size. It's about as big as um, Precision goes on that size on, like, a T4 housing. Right. And I think they're about to come out with, like, an 88 next gen. Okay. Which, their new next gen stuff, my buddy put... Switched from their neck, their regular turbos to their next gen on his Coyote car and picked up 300 horsepower. What? Yeah. Wow. The new Precision next gen. That's what, that's what I like, just got for this car that I have. Some next gens. Yeah. They're awesome looking. Yeah. Like I don't know. They must <laughs> they be did. some cheatered up stuff. Something. Where it's like wow, you know welded in a <laughs> yeah, <laughs> welded yeah. in ring like yeah, everybody always says about. <laughs> but yeah. I'm I'm interested to see what their new next gen 88s do on some 2J stuff, but. I don't know if I'm exactly power limited or if I'm stock block limited at the moment. Right. And then I really need a turbo 400 in that car to really utilize the power. Power glide. Is there? Really? Yeah. It's so easy and cheap. Yeah. You know, that thing breaks and it's like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The turbo 400s are crazy. Oh, man. I mean, like a turbo 400 from like Mickey with a lock up with a converter and a titanium can is like 30 grand. They're proud of those things. Yeah. I mean, they work good. They do work really Great. Good. I mean, I. Yeah, Nothing they against that. Good. They they work great. I I got a ton of friends with them. Oh yeah. And especially the way that they're kind of using the lockups on those, where they're using them almost like a five speed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like they lock them up, unlock them. Lock yeah. Them back. Oh yeah. And it kind of like it yep. flutters it almost. Yep. Going yeah. down track. Like we're just talking about the technology it. now is mm-hmm. what they're doing is crazy. Because once you have all the sensors and you can read what it's doing, you can really mm-hmm. plot what you're trying to do, and then what yep. they're doing with like Davis. Like what Shannon Davis is doing with his boxes mm-hmm. now and yep. some really trick stuff. I like seeing all like the high technology and that kind of thing. And it's it's cool to see tuners keep up because sometimes you worry some of these tuners that have been doing it for a long time. You They're know, stuck in their ways. Yeah, maybe they don't want to deal with that. And <laughs> right, yeah, it, yeah. And it's cool to see that they actually yep. 
are forward thinking enough mm -hmm. to to do that because some of them get stuck in like a oh, carbureted nitrous. Yeah, I don't want yeah, anything yeah, else. It. Yeah. <laughs> Blow through carb uh, on a pro There's charger. still a few people that are stuck there, but yeah. I know what you mean. You often get ran over though if you do oh, that. Oh, you have, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you kind of have to uh, yep. run with it. Yep, you got to adapt or, or get <laughs> run over, like you said. Yeah. yeah. There's, um, I mean, even like I watched Kai Kelly was just switched to his uh, screw blower, which is cool. Was it Noonan also? Is it a Noonan also? That new car is real nice looking. Yeah. yeah I cool. think he didn't like his old one very so much. So that's the, look. that is the old car. Is it the, that's the shocker. The old, old car. Well, the, because he had uh, one, I think, in between that, maybe. That's the one he just had built. So he had a, a like a, what is that, a third gen Camaro? Yeah, yeah. Third gen Camaro. So he had a third gen Camaro built and uh, whatever problems they had with it. So they cut the body off it and put that body on it and then oh. updated the chassis to fit it a little bit. Good call. So I that mean, is the third gen Camaro. I ain't a third gen guy. Yeah, no. That third gen looked goofy too. It was definitely some. Yeah, I think it had some weird, like, yeah. Yeah, had some weird, like, cuts and kind of chopped weirdly. <laughs> yeah. I don't like 13s They said it was factory, but it didn't look too factory. Yeah, it's tough with, like, NASCAR. If you ever see, like, the ways that they measure oh, yes. bodies, like, the car pulls in and they, like, drop something There'd on top of it. There'd be nobody in MPK. The whole race <laughs> would be canceled. Yeah, they, <laughs> like it they really test. But you can't, I mean, you can't get a, like, when we did Justin's first car, it was a big, like, don't cut the quarters. You can't put a 36-inch tire on a Lexus without cutting the quarters. It's like... Wait, you can't just put a thirty. Do? You can't just no. put that tire on yeah, there. Just put on anything. Yeah, uh, come on. It just. I guess fit. that's what they think. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, I guess that is true because those tires, they're almost like if you put them next to each other, they're almost wider than like a lot of cars. Oh yeah. Like if huge. you put them next to like a Starlet, they're wider oh, yeah, than a Starlet. a Starlet for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Went on a twenty-inch wide wheel now too. Oh wow. A twenty-inch wide wheel, eighteen or twenty. Yeah, we're talking about forty inches of just a wheel wheels. Right. And then some of like the. <laughs> The rear ends that are in there are so short. Oh, they're tiny. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. That rear end in that thing is a work of art, too. Oh, yeah. Marty builds some nice stuff. Marty builds a lot of them. Yep. It's cool how much, like, you guys have to take from, like, the top level of racing. Like, you even look at, like, like um, top fuel and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, that stuff, like, trickles down into everything. And Oh, yeah. Um, watching, like, people like Clay Milliken race top fuel and you know, 10,000 horsepower, and then you're like, oh, you know, my 1500s maybe not as crazy. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a little tameable. Maybe I don't mm -hmm. have to be as, uh, <laughs> I don't oh, have to yeah. be as worried. <laughs> yeah, those cars are, are wild for sure. They've, they they keep trying to slow them down, but they, mm -hmm. they don't work. Would you want to, uh, build a street car of any kind? Have you watched our street car class that we kind of run? <sighs> no, not, not much. Um, I don't know. It, the, that's so busy. It's yeah. hard to do anything for yourself. It's almost like I have to just buy something. It's more like um, if if you had the ability to build for any class right now, mm -hmm. what would you kind of like? Like, oh, that'd be fun to build something that could be competitive in. If I wasn't limited by money or time, or just like you know, a customer <laughs> was like, wide, a but... customer was like, I want to, I want to win a class. What should we win? Here's my check with no number for on me, it. For me, it would be Pro Mod or MPK yeah. because. Obviously, you want to win at the highest level. I, if, yeah. if, if there was a, a, a you know budget, then it'd be something different. But the, the pro mod is probably the coolest class. Yeah. For me, you know, right now. Yeah. So I don't blame you on that. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because I've talked to other people about this. I'm like, where is like, you know, if you're an, a professional athlete, and you play football, you know what the highest level is. Oh yeah. If you're a drag racer, we all kind of have a different definition of what our highest level is. Yep. Yeah. Because to somebody else, it may just be. You know, winning on the street, right? Oh yeah, and exactly. they don't even they don't even pay attention to a yep. drag strip and a tree. Yep. We all kind of have our different idea of the highest level. Yep, I agree. And it's kind of a kind of a cool thing because, you know, to some people it may be top fuel funny car. Yeah. To some people it may be a a door car mm -hmm. that runs four thirties. Yep. I don't know where my peak of drag racing would be. I don't know. I try I try to stay away from big floppy tires. I'm st <laughs> I still hold on to my really? prejudice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like the radial stuff, but it's it's interesting. But you know, when you have a three fifteen radial stretched, it's about as big as oh, any yeah, tire in the oh, world. Yeah, they put, I mean, a lot of the car we're doing a Pro two seventy five car. They run those on a fifteen inch wide wheel. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it's pretty stretched. Yeah, that's a that's yeah. a lot of tire. Yeah. I just um I was watching a couple days ago. John Doc's new white car. 
I think yeah. it's real nice. They yeah. did a good job on that thing. I know you've worked on a couple of his cars. His car's in my shop now. Oh, is it? Yeah. He's got one of his. The, uh, I don't there. know what he calls that one. It's a black Mustang. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what he calls that one, but yeah, it's, it's at the shop now. How's that thing looking? A little rough? So, uh, I don't know. He bought it like that, I think. Or maybe he had some stuff done. So uh, he brought it yeah, to change some stuff. And uh, he said, you know, if we were going to add a wing and a parachute mount, if you don't like any of the tubes, you know, let me know. And, well, <laughs> The only thing that's left is the main hoop, and I mm-hmm. uh, don't really like it either, but we're not going to go any farther, so it's yeah, starting to make some progress one. now. The, every chassis guy has their different way of that's doing it. it. Yeah, that's, that's I've, it. <laughs> I've personally dropped my car off for chassis work with Matt yeah. when he was at ProFab, and I'm like, Matt... I know Leave you. This. I know you don't like <laughs> yeah. these things that you see, but, but you can't touch it. And then I'll come back, and he's like, "I already did all the wiring." I'm like, "Matt, <laughs> yeah," and I'm like, "I know it's much better. I know yeah. it is, but like, if a car leaves somebody's shop with your name on it, that's the biggest thing. That's I, I've learned that over time, yep. and I don't I don't hold that against him. Obviously, I appreciate mm-hmm. the doing it correctly on everything, but." It is tough. Chassis chassis shops are tough with that because. Oh yeah, well there was just some goals he wants. Like he's gonna do ride-alongs with it. I think mm-hmm. so. He's got two uh, race tech seats, which are big seats. Yeah. And the frame rails, dual frame rails, were too wide. So he he said, you know, check it out. They look like they might be mounted a little off or whatever. So they were mounted the best they could be, but the frame rails were too wide. So we cut the frame rails out. Mm. We cut the mid plate out, the firewall out, the door bars out, funny car cage. The way the funny car cage was built, a little far forward for my window net or any window net. So I cut the funny car cage out. And I cut the back out because now we're going to rate, lower it and the shocks were mounted too low. And it's like, when you know, with the goals he wanted, it just wasn't going to yeah. work. So, And tying it, you know, you're trying to build something straight off of something that might not be how you would have done it. So, Yeah, that's that's the whole thing is like if it's not the way you would have done it, Right. Oh, I'm sure Troy was cursing up a storm looking at that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> he, oh, yeah. he doesn't really hold back when he no, uh, sees uh-huh. something he doesn't like. No, which is good, though. Troy's at way. least he doesn't just let stuff slide. He's pretty yeah. particular for sure. Sometimes, like, he he knew with us when me and Garrett would bring something in there, he knew he had to let a lot of things slide. <laughs> yeah. And I knew it'd eat him up a little bit. Uh-huh. <laughs> but it was always kind of fun to, like, push him <laughs> a little bit to, like, oh, yeah. kind of out of his comfort zone of, like, letting something uh-huh. slide and not making it perfect. Yep. But it is um it is nice to go to a chassis shop that will be honest with you and like mm-hmm. hey this ain't safe. Yep. Because I've I've often wondered that about some cars that leave shops and shops know how fast they're gonna be. Mm-hmm. And maybe like they leave with a ten point. Yep. And that shop knows like this man's about to go you know four fifties. Yeah. He's got a ten point. Yeah. So I wonder the amount of like responsibility that may like kind of fall on. Mm-hmm everyone involved yep i agree yeah, and i don't know where like where you would see that because like you know somebody comes in and so, you know how fast the car is going to be you fight that a lot what you said with the grudge guys so like yeah. i've built some cars that when i built them weren't necessarily going to go that fast but they don't want to add weight you know there was cars we built that go 430s no parachute no funny car cage just like this car should not be going 430s but well and they don't want to like look how much fast. is it going to weigh it's like, it doesn't matter. I'm, yeah. How bad is it going to be if you flip this thing over? You know what I mean? It's yeah. Flipping around on the end of the track. You ever see a car slide on its roof? It's not going to matter then how much it weighs, you know, if it's mm-hmm. 10 pounds or 15, whatever. Well, they don't want it to look fast either. That too. When no. they're trying to, like, you know, hustle somebody yeah. for some yeah. money. Yeah, street cars, factory. Yeah. Right. They want, like, a stock seatbelt in uh, there and yeah. a G-body. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's dang- <laughs> That's the most dangerous stuff to the grudge guys because yeah. they want to hide that is fast. So and it's always some it. sketchy G body too. It, it actually is a G body I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> it actually is. It always is some it sketchy is. G body. Yep. And they never go straight to begin with. Nope. So they're always doing some funky stuff and they oh, got yeah. those grandma seats in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, cuz that's tough, man. I've I've seen some rollovers in cars and I'm like, "Man, how'd the shop let him leave the car?" Like, you know, I get I try to get on all my friends. I'm like, "Go above and beyond." Like, yeah. I know fire suppression's heavy. Yep. I know it sucks. I know it's four hundred dollars a bottle, like, but you got to do it. Yeah. And you start nickeling. You know, you got a hundred thousand dollar motor, and you won't spend the extra mm-hmm. twenty grand to get your funny car cage finished up. And well, safety wise is a big thing too. But I've always in the past, not only for safety, but tried to push people to over cage a car because let's say you do a ten point and then you want to go to a twenty five five, you got to cut the door bars out, mm-hmm. the seat bars in the wrong place. There's so many things that you have to redo. 
because it's not in the right place. So now you're do, spending the money again. Whereas if you do the rocker bar now and the door bar now and a fun, you know a few things now, if you want to add on, it's add onable without cutting a bunch of the stuff off that you've already spent money on. Yeah, I think it's kind of crazy, honestly, in current time to put a ten point in any car. Maybe like a street car with like a maybe. You know? I mean, maybe, but even so, like even like a freaking stock Mustang currently with twin turbos, like. Oh no, that uh, yeah. Ten points already uh, I, not enough. I agree. Like it's almost, yep. it's almost too easy to make the power now. Yep. That. Oh yeah. The cage, like you need a funny car right away. Mm -hmm. Like if you're trying to make anything over like fifteen hundred horsepower. Oh, I agree. Which yeah, is yeah, oh, easy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Anybody can make fifteen hundred yep. horsepower with, you know. Yep. Couple grand and a junkyard <laughs> turbo. <clears throat> yep. It's kind of cool, but also the safety side of it often ends up falling down the wayside because. Finding good chassis shops that aren't backed up for five years the hardest part. is is tough, and chassis yep. jail is a real thing. One hundred percent. I yep. there's a Facebook page like uh, I've seen it. The chassis shops where yeah. like yeah. they just roast yep. bad chassis shops, yep. and it's deserving mm -hmm. most of the oh, time. Yeah. You're putting your life into this car. Yep. Oh yeah. You want to know that the guy actually kind of cared <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I agree. One hundred percent. Yeah. It is. That's the hardest part, and I and I tell people that call. We get probably, I don't know, we get multiple calls every day, people wanting stuff done, and, and now we just have to be picky because we don't have that much time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wish I could help everybody. I, I, and unfortunately, at the beginning, I try to help people. You just don't have, there's just not enough time. Um, and they ask for me to recommend somebody. It's like anybody who's good is busy. Yeah. You know, I, I, anybody who's good is going to be a year or two years out. Yeah, I mean, know? if you find a chassis shop that's not busy, it's probably... That's a, yeah. probably not the place to right. go. Like, oh, I'll get you in today. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> not <laughs> like that's like the tattoo guy you can get in today. You don't want to tattoo. Yeah, like the right? muffler shop. Like, it's yeah. not like your muffler shop where you just pull up and they'll no. cut your muffler off and straight by it. Like, yeah, no, that's no, different. You want to sure. do your homework? I mean, even like, um, I think it's what, Larry Jeffers, is it LJ yep. Race Cars? Yeah, yep. they they always post some real nice stuff, oh, yeah. too. Yep. And I'm sure he's backed up just oh, the yeah. same way. Yep, he's probably a year, two years out, I'm sure. And it's funny because, like, you guys, like, if you're backed up that far, like, you guys aren't really in competition. No, <laughs> there's uh -uh. enough. No, no, no. Uh -uh. But, like, you're not competing with other chassis shops because you, you can yeah. all turn down and yep. you can all fire customers. That's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you yep. can all pick and choose your work and, like, yep. who you want to <clears throat> kind of get in bed with for mm -hmm. a long, because these are long, long hauls. Well, I think that's the biggest thing now for me is to pick customers that can help promote the product yeah you know it's not just how much money can i make on this job how quick that mm -hmm. that's never unfortunately been my my goal it's always to build the nicest car i can build and i and what you know that so but now building something nice for somebody that's going to race it be competitive be in front of a lot of eyes is, is important for me yeah definitely because you're trying to sell parts <clears throat> right. where that makes the most sense because you're obviously not trying to fill up chassis shop slots right. those are done yep. you're good on that and then you can really i mean you can almost get to a point where you just build a car to sell the car instead of find find the customer after you build the car right. too yep like it didn't seem that hard to sell that mm -hmm. the the scion yep. same kind of deal you know you built a car ready to go and there was a buyer once the car was done yep and that seems to happen pretty frequently with some cars of that caliber but then the low caliber cars like you know Five second street cars are a little different where mm -hmm. they're hard to sell. It's kind of a weird like. <clears throat> there's that next level. Yeah. Once you like get a little gap and then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you get to that, then there's there's buyers. Well, because those the people with that kind of money, they're buying time. They don't want to wait, mm -hmm. and they have the money to not wait. You know, if they can pay an extra however much to have a car now. Yeah. You know, the biggest thing for us that's tough is like trying to cash flow, you know, inventory of a lot now, trying to inventory more. And if we're going to build a turnkey car, I mean, it would cost 300000 in parts to build a turnkey car. So yeah. Do you, um, do, that. do you charge as you do, <clears throat> like, as you do it? Like, like a know, full build? Well, some, some chassis shops that I've seen do like a pay as you go type of thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you do some work, you bill it, you do some work, you bill it. Cause so if it's a little job you know, I, and I say little, like anything, not, if it's a full build, I usually get paid in four payments, mm -hmm. labor, which probably isn't a great idea either because it does span. You know, if it takes a year, you only get paid every three months. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of fronting a <clears> bunch <throat> of money to your employees at that point. Right, and if it and if we do a car that's like a, anything less than a full build, I usually build like every two weeks. 
Yeah, that makes so. sense. And it's and it's probably better for the customer that way. Also, you know, that way they're not hit mm-hmm. with like, hey, uh, send me fifty thousand dollars tomorrow. <laughs> you know that that yeah. c- it gets carried away. So um, it may be better for both that way. But on yeah, the like full the builds, we kind of have it set where um, at certain uh, you know deadlines when we get to the chassis off the jig, when it goes to powder coat, when it comes back. Mm-hmm. So those kind of things. Yeah, it's crazy that you guys powder coat the whole chassis instead of just mm-hmm. like paint it or something. Because I imagine you could get away with painting it a lot easier. Some people do paint them. I yeah. just don't like to paint too much. Well, not everybody can ch- can powder coat a full chassis. Right. Yeah, Finding a place that actually find. can fit a full chassis into a oven. That's hard. <laughs> yeah. And do a quality job. Because a lot of people that can fit a full chassis into an oven are industrial people that do mm-hmm. stuff that don't necessarily have to look good. Yeah, yeah. You know, or really good. Just yeah. has to not corrode. Right. So we got lucky with the place we use. They do a really good job. So And they turn around pretty fast, like three to five days. Oh, wow. So. Does it hurt to have to grind any off of it when you have to? Grind powder cut off? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah. That's why I'm, That's why I wire and do everything first. Yeah. Because I don't like want to have to grind anything. Because if you had to grind it, I'm just ready to build a new car. Just scrap this one. We'll start over. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like once uh, Justin, you know, has to grind something off or redo something. I mean, he's changed motor combos a few times, headers yeah, the front and of his stuff. Car is painted now. <laughs> Maybe. Actually, when, when we fixed it in that four days or whatever, uh, we didn't even paint it. We just put it back together. Yeah, just left just it. Ain't no time. Send it. No, we didn't have time at all. It just <laughs> that's awesome. Just went, yeah, yeah. The yeah. the custom wings are pretty cool too, because like wings have such like a there's such like an art form to them. Mm-hmm. They have to like flow with the body lines, but then they also there's like a lot of style that can go into a mm-hmm. wing. When I put the wing on my Camaro, it really kind of set the look off. Oh, yeah. And they did a really good job on that wing and everything. But I've learned how shitty some <laughs> shitty wings can really oh, look. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, it's just like a piece of sheet metal bolted on. And yeah. then like a real nice one you can really tell. Like mine's strutless and stuff. So it mm-hmm. just like goes up and not nicely. And, and you've done, you even sell fox body wings now, don't you? Yeah, we sell, we have like five or six different wings we sell. Yep, and carbon <clears throat> wings and stuff. We do too. have we do some carbon stuff. It's kind of hard to get them from the guy we get them from, but um, mostly just aluminum. It's it's also interesting. I think people don't realize like even if you're going like 150 miles an hour in the quarter, how much that really helps. Yep, it planted my car so much. Mm-hmm. I can't. Anybody that posts like, oh, do I need a wing? People are like, no, you don't need it. I'm like, man, my car feels a lot better with a wing. It used wing. to kind of do like a uh-huh. one of these at yep. 170, and now it's just like, oh. One yeah. of different, you know, the heights, too, change everything. Like, if you take the wicker off or make it higher or make it lower, it, it changes a lot. I need to play with mine a little bit more because I've never really... Is yours adjustable? Yeah. Okay. The, the back wicker yep. can go up and down, like, mm-hmm. three different slots. It, it always seems so minuscule to me. Like, it's only, like, it help, half an inch. Yeah. But it's crazy to think that that'll actually do a lot, mm-hmm. that little half an inch. Yeah. With but, the with the NPK stuff, the wing rules are pretty, pretty specific. So we obviously push them the most we can, but... Mm-hmm. They tell you how long the side can be, how tall, the, how long the deck can be, how high the sides can be. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. I was wondering, like, with that deal, like, because they got to have somebody that really knows drag race and make those rules because the rest of it, like, the show, a lot of it isn't, like, filmed by, like, oh, these guys are, they know drag race and when they film it. Yep. And I always laugh at people, like, I've seen videos from people that don't know cars mm-hmm. film a car. And they'll film like the most random thing, and you're like, "That's not even like, <laughs> yeah. that's not even the exciting part right. of that car." Yeah, exactly. They'll like do B-roll, and it'll be like the headrest of a seat, and you're like, "That's not <laughs> yeah. like the cool part." Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's interesting because you have to have people that can film, but also know the cars. But then, like, the rule book is a whole different world. Even when they were racing on the street, is nothing mm-hmm. even similar. No, not even close. So. For the NPK, Lonnie Grimm, who's an NHRA yeah. tech guy, does it for the NAP, NPK. Interesting. Stuff. Yep. And do they? Ha- and they have lockup, obviously, rules in there. I know that's big in the NHRA it's world. Fifty pounds heavier, I think, for mm-hmm. lockup. But what if, like, are they gonna check your data log if you got one on the car and you don't use I th- it? So I think for so Justin had a five speed with a lockup, yeah. and they weren't using it to get the weight break. I think this year they said if you have it, you're carrying a fifty pounds. Oh, even if you just it. have it, yeah, because. Yeah. Even if the wire is disconnected, you have you interesting. You get the fifty pounds. Yeah, because it's tough. Like, how are you going to really know? I mean, mm-hmm. you can really do some cheater dub shit, but like that's drag racing. And I don't think the lockup in NPK was a, a crazy advantage because, like, uh, for us down track, you turn a lockup on and it's one to one, and you get more mile an hour. 
But in NPK, the tracks are good up front and not out back. So if you lock it up, it's actually another chance for it to you know spin or whatever. Yeah, so not the spot you want. To I don't. Spin. Th- I'm not saying they aren't faster sometimes, but I don't think it's a big enough advantage to carry 50 pounds. And I think that's why a lot of people got away from it. Hmm. Interesting that that such a big thing in mm-hmm. our class in streetcar. Yep. And our class is tough because we have some really fast guys, but they're trying not to add rules. Because they know once they add a rule book, people are going to... Kill the class. Hate it, yeah. yeah. So we're kind of in this weird spot of, like, <clears throat> no rules, but needing rules. I mean, we raced. That, that class is all over. I mean, TX2K rules, okay. um, FL2K, Streetcar Takeover runs all across the country. Mm-hmm. And they, they all use similar-ish rules, but they're very broad. Okay. So you can... You can really run away with that class if you wanted to, but there's not enough money for people to like, yeah, get kill the class. Just at the moment. Yeah, right. Like, once you put up some big money, yeah, you know, twenty thousand dollar purse or something. Exactly. Then the yeah. class all of a sudden is going right. to disappear. Mm-hmm. Kind of happened at FL two K a little bit. You know, there was a ten thousand dollar purse, but they're changing the way that you're allowed to only sign up for one class now. So they're kind of. So is is there like a is it split like a. Fa- is that the class that uh, they'll split it, yeah. or no? Yeah. Okay, so that is the same class. Mm-hmm. But was it sp- it was split into? They would do slower, um, top sixteen. Okay. Um, middle sixteen and bottom. 16. So how many people sandbag to be? Yeah, that's in the, the middle tough part. That should be in the top. I would like to see blind qualifying. Yeah, yeah. So you run your four qualifiers uh, and then they post the qualifying I'm sheet. I'm sure there's somebody that knows they're gonna be. Yeah, I mean it was like six nineties. Right. Seven zero. 707070, and then like everybody was trying to be like right. real slow because uh-huh. then it went, then it goes to like 850s because mm-hmm. <laughs> right. everybody was trying to like slow their car down. Yep. But somebody's got to be the bottom of the A class. <laughs> yeah. But they're, they're talking, I think, about like a top eight instead of a top 16 because okay. there's only so many people going 680s yeah. in a car that they have to go yeah. drive on the street. Right. You actually had to drive them? I mean, I know they are street cars, but do you actually have to drive We don't them drive them? them, but if you protest... They have to drive it. You can drive it. Wow. You can protest to drive it. But then, you know, like Brett LaSala and Garrett, they both run drag and drive so events. So people know they can drive them. So you're, you're going to go protest a car that you know Yeah, can, and drives hundreds of miles. Away. Yeah, right. and if you're not even near them, like if I go protest in a 780 car, if I go protest the 650 car... I just look like the the yeah, idiot, right? <laughs> yep. Like protester, you're not even close. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of is tough in that aspect, but I think for I think they're going more towards like a extreme 28 inch tire okay. class, where everything kind of goes on a 28 inch tire. Yep. But then you end up as LDR. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Which is one of my favorite classes because I think it has the most unique mm-hmm. cars. LDR kind of brings the mm-hmm. like ultra street kind of. Kind of just the slower LDR, but it doesn't bring as much uniqueness into yeah. the LDR. And it's not as carried away yet. Even Pro 275. Pro 275 was like the big class. And it's still big, but now they're going six, you know, middle to low 60s. It's mm-hmm. 275. Yeah. 360s is crazy. And heavy, too. Like, no, yeah. They're like, carrying some weight. I mm-hmm. think their Pro Charge deals got away like 2800, 2750. Yeah, that's a, that's a heavy car. For, that's... Uh, for that, yeah. It's, it is. I mean, yeah, in general, like, it's mm-hmm. not that light to be going that fast. Like, and people don't realize once you start carrying weight and once you have to add weight, it gets dangerous. Absolutely. Adding yeah. weight is a scary thing. It is. Because you can only add so much weight before you're like, I have, you projectiles. know, 200 you pound have projectile right behind me. Yeah. And I know there's rules about how you secure it, but like. Yeah, this thing's going to happen. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, cars, cars come apart pretty good when they come apart. Well, and it, like we were talking about earlier, how many places we put to add weight but a lot of cars weren't built for that and mm-hmm. if they're adding weight they may just be putting a clamp on or who they're trying to race they're not going to not make weight you know people yeah. will do stuff that might not be ideal for sure i saw it happen with james once he comes down from a wheelie the weight came off and i see like two things like bounce across the track i'm like what the hell is that <laughs> a lead like oh man. block i'm like oh nice <laughs> yeah because you know i think it's like what a half inch bolt needs to yep. go through it yep like if you have like a lead mm-hmm. bar but even that, like, getting lead is a pain in the ass it to is, begin with. It is a pain. <laughs> yep. But I don't know. Well, man, uh, we can end it off there. That was an awesome conversation. So, uh, guys, check out CJ Race Cars on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You said you're going to start posting some YouTube stuff again. I need to. We did a few, but we haven't done much. We need to do yeah. Watch his cars and No Prep Kings coming up this season because uh, there's going to be some 
Justin's going to be doing. It's just Justin, right? Justin right now and uh, Clay. Clay's right. Okay, now, so. so Justin and Clay, watch those car. Watch out for those cars. But, dude, thanks for coming down, yeah, man. Absolutely, thanks for having. That was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that'll do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Thank you.